David Millsaps is in the studio. When I was a kid living in Australia, Mini Warriors 4 <laughs> was about the most played thing that has ever been put in a VCR in my house and you were front and centre in that. Going pro, I had so much height around me going pro. You know, I was 178 pounds on a 155 two stroke. Going against James, 132 pounds on a fast bike. He could do the triples from the inside. I couldn't even do it from the outside. <laughs> That's when the suicide started to come into play with the whole time is like, I can't live like this. It'd be easier for everyone if I was just gone. I was on a mission not to be suicidal anymore. Was it a big money deal to go to JGR? No, I took a huge pay cut going oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, huge pay cut. But I was willing to take a huge pay cut and get off Honda. So you guys were on good money yeah. back then as an amateur? No Fear was great. As far as pain, they were great until they weren't. I went two years without getting paid. This episode is brought to you by Yamaha and the all new 2024 YZ250F. It's no secret that I've been a big fan of this 250F. Where would you go right now if you want to win a lights championship? Star Yamaha. And in 2024, Yamaha has migrated their latest chassis platform to the quarter leader king. With the new chassis designed to flex in the right areas that allow for maximum feel through the turns without sacrificing stability. There's also an all new Ergos package designed at slimming down the bike and updates to the rider triangle to improve rider comfort. The Yamaha still has that same exciting engine package that has become a modern icon in the 250 class, rocketing star racing to the lion's share of the last decade's titles. Combine this with Yamaha's Bluetooth connectivity for easy mapping and engine monitoring, and you have one of the best production 250s on the market today. To learn more, head to yamahamotorsports.com or click the link in the description below. I'm at a gypsy. So if you pull up the closer, the better to this. Uh, and then that's it. We just fucking, we just go for the next little bit, mate. Yeah. Sounds good. So David Millsaps is in the studio and... Uh, <laughs> I'll give you some background, mate. When I was a kid living in Australia, Mini Warriors 4 <laughs> was about the most played thing that has ever been put in a VCR in my house and you were front and center in that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to do I this with that. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Pretty, pretty crazy career uh, and I guess like just life in the sport, you know, like that whole generation, like the Mini Warriors yeah. generation, it's like it. you guys are – you were so young in the spotlight and still pretty relevant like a lot of you guys, you know, like I think of like you and I think of Hill, you know, Travis, like it seems like that generation got a lot of mileage out of the sport in a sense, you know? I mean, dude, we were, God, I was 12, I think for Mini Warriors. Yeah, right. Um, that was, that was a hell of a time. Let me tell you that that whole story, the whole filming of Mini Warriors, like there's so many behind the scenes bloopers that I don't think that anyone ever wanted to come out. You know, I mean they they had the cops come multiple times. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, what was it like? What was the deal? Um. <laughs> so it was Kelly Tedder. Yeah. Clayton Miller. Dude, Kelly. Uh -huh. I was thinking about um. You know, remember Fifty Nuts? Yeah. Yep. The they got like that big ass drain. Was that on the ninety one? Do you remember that? Like, cause he he I never. I was trying to think of who it was that it was, was like the he but Kelly Tedder. He maybe, was like the main guy in yeah, Fifty Nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was only thinking about him the other day, and I could not remember was, his name. He was crazy. Yeah, he honestly, right. like, yeah, he was. I spoke to him. I think uh, a couple of years ago, I actually spoke to him. But no, we were they were all at my house. You know, little uh, Brian Johnson, myself. Um, and then those two, I think there was a few other guys that were in the film with us. I'm not 100% sure if, if uh, they were they were there or not that night. I just had knee surgery or my knee was, sorry, I just blew my knee out. So I was already, I was still struggling. Um, we went to Walmart or something. And then obviously Kelly Tedder and Clayton Miller being way older than us um, were mucking around and, and being idiots. Got the cops called, um, kicked us all out, even though I wasn't even really there. <clears throat> um, so we then... 
We went to Win Dixie, which is just across the street. Yes, Win Dixie, yeah. um, <laughs> which is a grocery store, by the way. Yeah, and in Cairo, Georgia, and they did the same thing in Win Dixie, and the same cops got called, and they came up to me while I was in checkout, while they were, you know, messing around in the back of the store. I, I was in checkout. Me and little Brian were there, and I'm I'm buying gum and an apple juice because literally I'm 12 years old. Like, what else am I gonna do? And in the middle, like right there, they're like, "Come outside." I'm like for what they're like well your friends are messing around i'm like yeah but that's them like bird of a feather fought together and that saying stuck with me from that day on arrested me put me in the back of the cop car no is it 12 at 12 years old um and then the the main guy came and and the, the, the sheriff whatever he was yeah um let us all go um but they were going to take the other ones to to jail i think they're just doing it to scare us but i'm like i literally yeah. was doing nothing you know and, and we all we all wore you know stupid stuff while we were riding dirt bikes too that Thank God didn't make it in. Um, we're all just wearing really tiny underwear and <laughs> <laughs> shit was hanging out left and right. It was it was not a good sight. Um, but dude, those honestly were probably some of the most fun times as yeah. racing period. Talking to Michael Lapaglia yesterday, big Mike Lapaglia, not, yeah. not not little Mike. He was like, Man, those are the greatest times ever. And I'm like, if you can only go back in time. And dude, not- it it fully like I don't know if you've ever thought about the effect that it had on like people all over the world, but I mean that it was so big in moto culture, <laughs> you know, like me and my brother would have watched that fucking hundreds and hundreds of times. And like, I remember, um, was it road and dirt TV? Was that the road and dirt.com road and dirt.com. Yeah. yeah. And there's like a video of you, like can't, can't stop by red hot chili peppers yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like you know we're just we're we're from a tiny town in the middle of nowhere australia and it's like that's what we had as kids you know <laughs> and it's just crazy the reach that that shit had and yep. like the way that it inspires so many generations of of riders that you know you would have just like never had any contact with you know honestly i've been reached out to a few times from people saying the same thing you just did and you know, back then, no, I would never have thought that it was, it was all just for fun. You know, I was just pumped to, to ride with guys and, and to make cool footage. And, you know, back then, obviously for the, for the VCR and stuff, yeah. um, but it was just, it was just a cool time. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I never once ever thought of, oh, you know, this, you know, this, nah, you wouldn't, you would have had no idea. Not at 12 years old, nah. you know, and, and, you know, looking back now, it's like, I can imagine that it, that it did because of how big of an impact that movie had on the sport yeah um not just with me though i mean there was so many other amateurs that were fast in it oh dude josh hill yeah. like, he <clears> even was in tomac it, was know, in tomac it tomac was that in was it. his whole rodeo yeah chewing on the wheatgrass <laughs> yeah that's um, right but there was so many so many good riders yeah um that's obviously still are relevant today uh, but no we would have never i don't think Back then, you would never thought you that couldn't it, it, know it, it reached so many people and, and helped inspire them to keep racing or to keep riding or to keep trying and, and yeah. doing things. Nah. It's funny that like, so I've got one of the boys that works for me in Australia, um, Alex, Moto Kid, mm-hmm. same deal, you know, and like it's his first trip over to America. He came over last week and it's like, I don't think Americans have the perspective of how much they're the center of the motocross universe. And you just grow up in it and you just do your thing, but there's always cameras around. It gets, yeah. gets put on the internet. It's like, it's like ground zero for everything that goes on in yeah. the motocross world, almost like, especially in supercross. But it's like, we, we had our race at Mesquite on the weekend yep. and he's like frothing because he plays it on an MX sim. And I'm like, what the, I'm, you know, that's, that's like the next generation is like these kids playing the MX sim, all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. 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 Julian does the same stuff. And I'm like, he's like, dude, I just played this last night. I know this rhythm section. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's not the same as, as a freaking computer game or whatever they're playing. Yeah. Or, you know, like I haven't played video games in 12 years. So I, I, since my son was born, I really, I played with him maybe two or three times, but dude, I can't play. No, you know, the same, yeah. And especially when I hit my head, now my eyes go bloodshot almost instantly. So really? Like I really, I really, I really can't play. No shit. Um, you know, my eyes start to hurt so bad. That I just, Ah, it's not worth it but no i mean for us growing up the cameras weren't too bad back then because it was i think well, it was way more like innocent in a sense eh? 
It wasn't so like on Instagram, uh-uh. instant feedback. Dude, like we, we had you, MySpace, we had AIM. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We, it was AOL. It was, it was yep. AOL Instant Messenger. That's all we had. You know, phones were just starting to come out. Um, you know, the big, the bleep bleep, the walkie talkie <laughs> next cell was was the thing over here. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's. I would I would say I didn't grow up in that in that era. So for me now, trying to get into the whole swing of the social media and stuff like that is. I think harder because I never grew up with it. Yeah. You know? Um, but I think now if, if you had now or then what there is now, <laughs> I think it would have been a whole different story. I think things would be way bigger because of the, our generation, uh, even the era just right before me, you know, mm. and um, with the Lusk and the Carmichael's and, and K-Dub when he first started and, um, you know, the Dow's like, Everyone like right there that's building it up in the McGrath, obviously. Yeah. Building it up to where then it came into our era, it just exploded. But it, I think it would have been way bigger had we had social media like we do now. Yeah, but I wonder, I wonder how much of the culture you'd kind of lose because, like, you think about, let's say you you go film what like someone's there filming some races or like going to your place and yeah. filming, and, and then it takes like probably five six months for that to actually go anywhere you know what i mean whereas nowadays it's like you post you edit you you film you edit you post and then it's like the next day next day there's no dvds anymore (laughs) there's no you know what i mean like the culture's kind of like gone from it like i can remember when you said that eli tomac thing it's like the song comes back Uh but even like i was watching a terra firma clip today and it's like you cannot use that kind of music anymore. No. Back then, you just it didn't even matter what fucking music you use. Like you could literally just do whatever you wanted. And I think all of that adds so much more to the culture that you just kind of don't. It's kind of gone now, you know. Like a new Twenty One Savage song comes out, and it's like every single rider in the two fifty class within a three week span will have some kind of edit to the new Twenty One Savage song. I don't even really know how to make edits on Instagram. So you shouldn't. I'm, you're I'm, old. I'm, I'm lost with <laughs> I'm that old. stuff. You're old. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm lost with that. My wife helps me make some of the edits. Um, but I, I get what you're saying for sure. But it also would have helped. I think the sport grow. Yeah, for sure. Um, as far as the culture though, a hundred percent. I think we had the best era when yeah. it came to like just that badass culture that everyone wanted to be a part of. Um now there's so much friction there's so much you know tension between every rider no one can go and talk to each other and and it's just like dude it's at the end of the day you guys deep you guys ride dirt bikes for a living you know what i mean like i get that you got to be serious i get this is your job but at the end of the day again you ride a dirt bike like he is just trying to beat you but at the end of the day what for what reason is there so much animosity between the whole entire industry there's no need for it and i think social media has a way of creating all that animosity between everybody. Yeah. And I'm glad for us that, yeah, we didn't have that. Yeah. I mean, I had Michael Lessie who I absolutely despised as an amateur racer, let's <laughs> yeah. face it, you know, but there was no one else that I really cared about. Yeah. You know, everyone else, it was just friends. I would go talk to everybody. I couldn't do that when I went pro and no one would talk to you. Everyone yeah. was too serious, you know? And, and, but eventually they started learning like, dude, I'm going to talk to you no matter if you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just going to talk. I think it, I wonder if it's because it's such like a contact sport. So like you have downhill mountain biking, which I'm a huge fan of, right? All those guys are all super tight and they're all super friendly and they all hang together. They ride together. They all travel together. But it's like at no point are they on the track together. (laughs) This is true. So, and they always say like, oh, we're friends. Why can't they be friends? It's like, well, because they're literally fighting each other. Like when you go out onto the track, like you're going to get some big hits, you know, like fucking some nhl style shit where it's like bang like you <laughs> yep. get you get yep. smashed you know yeah and it's like you do that not to mention the guys that are on the start line together now like a eli malcolm Barsha, they've been racing together since they were six years old and they're in their 30s so it's like a quarter of a century dealing with the same motherfuckers block passes and this like that's there's not really many other sports where you'll have like that much history and baggage yeah with people that you know you're like in a contact scenario with you know i mean they're all dealing with the same bam bam that's for that's for sure that's <laughs> yeah that would be rough growing up with when i talked to jb i'm like dude like 
even when he was at my house when he was probably nine. Oh yeah, because he was an old. MTF kid. Well, yeah. even before MTF. Oh. Um, and he was out there, and he's like, "Man, did you see me?" I'm like, "No, I didn't watch." He goes, "Man, I took everyone out." <laughs> I'm like, I tell him that story all the time. He dies. He goes, "Yep, sounds like me." And I'm like, "Dude, you were literally, I think, nine years old on an uh, no, he might have been ten on a, I think it was an '85 Honda '85, literally taking every rider out as as much as you know as much as he could, and just to just to beat him. And I'm like, I I love the drive. <laughs> yeah, know? love but the commitment, brother. You're gonna have a lot of enemies when you grow up, and <laughs> yeah. obviously he does. But you know. It's just one of those things that maybe the contact sport does it, you know, but I also think it's just, it's, you know, drilled into us growing up that, you know, these are enemies, like you can't talk to them, you know, and it's like, mm. no, it's, well, that's I get what, it. That's what I was going to say. Like there's maybe more, oh fuck, maybe it's still exactly the same, but like parents, dude, like, oh, they're gnarly. How many parents are just living through their kid? All of them. Yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. You know, the I think the only ones, there's only a few that I for sure know that that, that really haven't, you know, which would be Ricky's parents, um, Dungey's parents. Um, and then you have Big James. I mean, Big James is still around. Yeah. You know, and, and that dude's like family. So I talk to him all the time. I grew up I from 30 minutes from where they're, <laughs> where they're from, you know. And, and so for me, yeah, it's, he's, he's probably one that didn't, you know, for sure. And those, those, those writers that I named, yeah. but it's a lot, a lot of parents who lived through their kid and, and maybe wanted them to succeed more than the more kid, than the wanted, kid to wanted to succeed. So the pushing got way harder, maybe not necessarily, you know, necessarily living through the kids, but just wanting them to succeed and pushing them so hard that it just broke, you know, the relationship between them. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, just at one point, just, just back off. Yeah, because the kids that make it have to be self-motivated. Yeah. Like there's just no – I just don't – I don't see a world where a kid makes it purely based on like the parents pushing it. But that's – I feel no. like that's in everything. Yeah. Like in all the things that I've been successful at, completely self-motivated. Like nobody gets me out of bed in the morning to Motivation do do. is simply – Getting up and doing what you don't want to do, yeah, and making sure you do it. Get up, saying "fuck it," I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Like that's motivation for me. It, it's doing the hard things, mm. doing the things that you know no one else is willing to do. And there's a lot of people out there that are not willing to do that. You know, they're willing to just stay in their comfort zone. They're mm. willing to just be okay with this. You know, oh, it's okay. I, I I'm in fifth. Like I'm okay with that. You know, I was stuck there for a long time. You know, and and I was. I was okay with with it, you know. I had the people around me that were the wrong people, so it was always open, you know. Made me okay with with just how I was. Yeah. Um, but no, hands down, like yeah, having that, having that grit, having that, fuck you, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it's something that it's not given to you. You're yeah. not born, you, you know, with it. God doesn't give it to you. It's, it's oh, I I listen to a podcast and all of a sudden, yeah, I yeah, got I'm it. A savage no, now. no, yeah. dude, it's literally every day you get up. You got to have that every day. You got to, you're a fucking savage. Yeah. If you're not a savage, what the fuck are you? You're nothing. You know what I mean? You literally are going to stay in your comfort zone where dreams go to die. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and this sport comfort zone doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, it really in life comfort zone doesn't exist. You know, success is just on the other side of it. Yeah. The, I always say, and dude, I find myself in the position where I'm like just wrestling this all the time. It's like <laughs> success is basically like how much stress and pressure can you put on yourself, which is almost another way of just saying accountability. Yeah. Like how much accountability can you carry for how long? Because it's like when you decide to drop that accountability, that's where you are. Like that's your ceiling. Like yep. you walk with it as far as you can take it. And at some point you just drop it. And then it's like, cool, this is where I'm at. And you could be like, you could be Ricky Carmichael. You know, like he could have won the championship in 07 when he did his half year, but it was like, yep. you know what? I'm fucking done. So he's like, he just dumped all of it off his shoulders and was like, this is it. Like, yep. I'm good. And the time that you drop that accountability, you can be the most winningest rider of all time. Or you could drop the accountability before you even fucking realistically pick it up, you know, and you get kind of nowhere. So, yeah. and even in my life, I'm like, 
I, in my own way, like I've got a lot of pressure on me. I've got a lot of stress. I'm a business owner. I'm doing blah, 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 blah. Like I've got yep. all this shit. And it's like, there's sometimes where I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm so over it. Like, yeah, but those are the times that you, when you go forward and you say, fuck it, I'm going to do it. When you just literally let go of every distraction, focus on the main goal at hand, and you're going to get there no matter what it's going to, you know, what it's going to take. That is is where you're at today, you yeah. know? And, and, and that's what Ricky did. He yeah. literally, he didn't care who was in his way. He was going to become the best. Same with Villapoto, same with Dungey, you know? And, and it's like, okay, those guys had no distractions. They didn't care who was in their path. They were, yeah. they were going, yeah. they had that motivation. They just kept doing it. Yeah. They, just kept doing it. They, they did it that one more time. Yeah. You know, yeah, they yeah. just tried it one more time. And that's all it took to be a champion where everyone stops at that. Oh no, I'm done. I've done it so many times. I'm done. They did it that one more time. Yeah. And that one more time is all it took, yeah. you know? And that's where it's like in life now, you know, you look back and you're like, man, it had, I just done it that one more time. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it could have changed everything. I've heard you say a couple of times, like you didn't have the right people around you. Like what, yep. what did that look like? <sighs> I mean, when you have someone, you know, that, that you're around your whole life and, and then, you know, you go a separate way and, and you're young, um, you're very, let's say gullible, you're right. You know, vulnerable and you, well, you and, don't know what you don't know. Yeah. It's Cause I was never around, you know, stuff like that. So then you, then you hire, you know, people around you and, and they lead you down a pathway that, uh, they make you believe is okay. You know, that, that this is, this is okay. You can just rely on your talent. Like, you know, you're working hard you know, you're doing good. Like you don't want to go for bike ride. No worries. Let's just, just like go yes here. man type stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Oh my God. It's bad. Yeah. And, and it, it turned it, my mindset to where if I didn't feel like moto and I just go home, I just do it tomorrow. Mm. You know, that, that tomorrow was always there. Mm. It's all it wasn't. And, uh, the people that were around me for a majority of my career were, were yes men. And it's not like I did terrible. I had a career that people sometimes would dream about. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Let's face sure. it. But not the one that I dreamt about. Yeah. And that's a big regret in my life, I would say. But also it's it's a lesson learned. Yeah. You know, now I can take what I've learned, the mistakes that I made, and I can instill them and and make sure that it doesn't happen with someone like a Julian, yeah. you know, who's still young and growing, you know, Benny's obviously old and, and on a 450 now he's not, he's not young anymore, you know, but with someone like Julian, who's so young, 17 years old, I can do that to where I can help him push right now that one more time yeah, you know, yeah, to yeah. get to the other side to where he's like, wow, you know, I'm not going to lead him down the drinking path or the bad eating path or the going out at night path or, or, you know, just being stupid with your friends and, and not caring so much about training. Like, no, dude, like, I don't care if you're tired, you're going, Yeah. you know, it, it's, I can do that now. Cause it's a lesson that I learned. Do you reckon you knew deep down when you were in the moment and then like you let those people like kind of push it over the edge or do you, were you, were you like genuinely naive to it? That's a good question. Um, I would, I would say, when I would, <laughs> I don't even know, man. It, it, it's, I want to say I knew, I want to say I knew. Um, but then again, it was more so they had me having so much fun and the distractions that I would almost forget what I really had a gut instinct about. Mm. Um, like for example, I'd line up on a race to go race and yeah, I could have been in the fastest one there. But dude, I would fade or I'd get tired or, or I wouldn't start fast because I'd be afraid to get in tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a huge thing yeah. that not a lot of people actually admit. That like yeah. how many people get bad starts all the time? <laughs> Motherfucker, you don't want a good start. You don't, you don't want to be in front. You don't want a fucking good yeah. you know how I know that? Because I don't want a good start. Because I know <laughs> I suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, it it's you know, when and then when I would fade or I'd get tired, I'd be like, fuck, man, I got to get home. I got to train. I got to get better. I got to do my motos. And then I go and I'd be having a bad day at the track and my bike doesn't feel good or the track is just terrible that day. And it's just, it's, you know, there could be dogs barking in the background. The sun yeah. could be in my eyes, whatever it could be, you know? And yeah. it's like, oh, man, fuck, I don't want tomorrow's to. Tomorrow's a new tomorrow's day. Tomorrow's a new yeah. day. Let's yeah. just start tomorrow. Yeah. And then guess what? Tomorrow was the same 
thing because yeah. my mindset was, oh, I can just do it tomorrow. Because once you quit the first time and the second and the third, it just becomes so easy and so natural to just quit. Yeah. That it was just what I did. Yeah. You know, and and I talk to people, you know, all the time about stuff like that. And they're like, wow, you're at least you can admit it. I'm like, why would I hide? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had probably I had some of the most talent on a oh, dirt dude, bike, you're period. Fucking unbelievable. And then I just squandered it. I yeah. literally wrote off the talent my entire career. I was talking to Dungey at, at Redbud last year, and I'm like, dude, the only year I trained realistically was in 2013. Yeah, and look at what happened. And I then. almost and I almost won. He goes, What do you mean you almost trained? Like he's like, I literally only really trained that year really, really hard. And I almost won. Yeah. And I'm like, that's only <laughs> <laughs> the year that I besides besides 06 and you know and whatnot but that's yeah besides that no I was hurt every year I was I was yeah. in a funk every year I was having fun every year so yeah it, it kind of caught him off guard I think when I said that I only trained that one year yeah because he trained literally his yeah. entire life as and look, hard but look, as possible but, yeah. but look what it did yeah you know it, hard work will outdo talent 10 out of 10 times yeah you know and, and that's those are the shoes that I put on yeah do you think uh like, because I, I guess it's, like, fairly well known that, like, you and your mom had, like, the fallout and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And do you think that there's a part, this is not me making excuses for you, but do you think that there's a part where you were just, like, regimented your entire life yeah. to, like, get to the big show, to get the factory ride, to, like, make, the, it was just, like, drilled. You almost didn't have a childhood. <laughs> and then you get the ride, you win a championship in 06. I'm sure you were getting good money. And you just go like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> because like I can fully see that being a world where like, like I could see that being like yeah. a, an acceptable thing because it's like, dude, there's so many kids. You just didn't get a childhood, you know? And all honestly, like in a roundabout way, I can see where that, that could be. I don't think it was necessarily that because I, I truly believe I had one of the best childhoods that you could ever ask for when it comes to well, that's what, awesome. what I was doing, where I was going, how I was traveling, who I was hanging with, the races I was going. All I want to do is ride my dirt bike. Yeah. Okay. So I got to ride my dirt bike all the time. And and as a child, with if that's all you want to do and you got to do it, you know, yeah, that, that was my dream. That's why we moved to Georgia <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I got to ride every day. Where When I lived in Florida or you know, St. Cloud, I got to ride twice a week or once a week and then race on the weekend, whether it be Biffalo, Gainesville, Reddick, you know, Dade City. Um, county line like I get I got to race those on the weekend but that's why I moved to Georgia so we can ride every day yeah uh, so for me yeah I had a good childhood but my childhood was I would say very strict um and regimented 100% you know my, my curfew obviously but you was, like was wanted to do it yes but then as I got older you know it's like okay I'm doing all the work I think it burnt me out yeah quite, yeah from being so young doing it yeah and you know, one thing that I, you know, that I read back in the day is if, if you get burnt out in something that it's not for you, but I, I would argue that point because I was burnt out. I just needed, I needed some time to come back, but in this industry, you don't yeah, have time. You don't get time yeah. And you know, if, if I could have taken a little bit of time off and, and just recouped and, and regrouped with everything that was going on in my life at the moment, I think it could have been way different for me. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I was training from the time I was freaking eight years old. Yeah, hundred percent. And and it was brutal yeah. it was a lot of work you know and and moto after moto and and wheelies and starts and figure eights and turn track and sprints and motos and motos and motos and it's like and the running i hated the running uh, i still hate the running um but yeah it's just every day yeah you know from the time you're eight years old until you're you know 19 it, it wore on me oh know? man for sure so, like so townley his kid's really good yeah i don't know if you've seen yeah, him, yeah i saw right. him last yeah. year yeah so but he's saying that he's so keen just wants to work every day wants to do yep. everything all the time and he's like nine or ten or whatever and ben's like fuck <laughs> tries to tell he's like hey man i've loved this about you yeah and this is great but there is trust me you can burn yourself out on this yeah. so like please if you love this as much as you say you do like chill chill no <laughs> yeah. and because and, it's gnarly to be a kid and to be that zoned in and it's like yeah. at some point you figure out that there's more to life than a dirt bike and, and again we are tiny compared to the world yeah you know what i mean and, and it's that's why i'm okay with my son just chilling i know he wants to do it so bad and, and you know the whole point of selling the home 
couple of years ago was to move around and my wife got a job and, and which was a you know dream job for her. So I'm like, okay, fuck, we'll stay. Um, and, and it's great. My son, he goes and rides and dude, I can literally sit back and just watch him ride. And, yeah. and I don't care, you yeah. know, like, yeah, he got hurt and that's unfortunate, but he didn't crash or anything. He literally just, he dropped his leg off the peg. That's his own fault. Um, but I, 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 I don't care, you know, if, if he, goes fast if you go slow okay cool great you yeah. know only thing i started to get irritated with is if i tell him to do something and that's gonna keep him safe and he doesn't yeah. do it that's when i get mad yeah um or if he tells me dude like let's go here i'm telling you i'm gonna do good and he goes out and he rides like a pansy then i'm like dude like why did we come yeah. you know what i mean like i get if you're gonna go let's just say let's go have fun let's go do it yeah um but no for me being burnt out everyone just getting burnt out as a young age and then and then the whole drinking thing drinking scene came about you yeah. know in in my era yeah um and that was a big 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 thing um that's where they were leading me down yeah and it was like i didn't realize how much destruction that would have on my body at a young age you know yeah, 20 dude. 21 years old and yeah because that was the after party era uh-huh like they actually were after parties and heavy after parties on a saturday night after the race you yeah. know and then you go home sunday and and whatever and then you go monday tuesday ride maybe thursday ride depends on you know how you feel you sometimes didn't ride monday because you're still trying to recover from the saturday night <laughs> yeah um and then bike rides were you know far and few between and um but yeah i'm i, I don't care how open i am about that stuff anymore it's it was it's part of of my yeah. career you yeah. know um Fuck, how many athletes get wasted every Saturday? Like, <laughs> it's so looked down upon in our sport, it, or it's it's so like hidden in our sport. But we in have a way. to be so mentally clear, and and honestly, alcohol does so much damage to your body. Yeah, you know, and um, it, it's insane the amount of destruction it does that you don't even realize. Yeah, um, especially when you're in top shape, which I I hardly ever was. <laughs> yeah. So you got to add in the fact that I wasn't in top shape and I was doing that and I was eating like shit. I mean, my trainer would bring me a coffee cake every freaking morning that I would go race. What? And because that's what I wanted because it sounded good. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't so know you, any different. So you basically were just like paying a dude. Yeah. And then the dude was like, I want to keep getting paid. So whatever the fuck he wants me to do, I'll just do. But I, he wasn't like a real trainer. I mean, I, I, I won, you know, a few rounds with him. I did. I I did win, you know, and, and I'm not saying that it's just him, you know, it was, uh, people, other people that I had around me as well. And it's just, I wish the food and I wish the drinking and I, I wish learning about the stuff that I know now was implemented back into my program back then. Mm. Cause it could have, I think changed my program around pretty fast back in the day when my mom and I went our separate ways. Yeah. Um, and I never got that. You know, everything that I know now, everything that I'm able to teach Julian and Benny and, and all the guys that I work with, I'm, I've taught myself, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. I've learned through a few other trainers that I've had and that were really good trainers. Um, you know, it's like, like, you know, Ezra Lusk, he taught me so much, you know, Pablo taught me a ton. Pete Colson taught me a, a ton, you know, and, and being with those group of guys, my entire career, you know, not my entire career, but the entire end of my career, it, it, it changed how I thought about stuff, how I processed things, how my mindset was, which is where the whole Millsats mindset thing comes into play. Now it's, it's like, okay, I'm not that guy anymore. I, I know what not to do. So let's do it the right way, mm. you know, or, or the way that, you know, <laughs> a way, a different way than what I did it. Um, and kind of just spun, spun out of control in the beginning and in the end like i said those guys were around me and and i had it all figured out my last year had it all figured out mm. and i was on another level and then it ended ended uh one year too soon yeah so yeah. but all in all you live and you learn right yeah. yeah yeah and it's like if you you know you go back and you look at your life and you don't have the freedom that you uh, think you do yeah. in a lot of time. Like it's very easy to sit back now in hindsight and say, I should have done this, should I that, wish I done. But <laughs> it's like in the moment, like you just don't have the freedom. It's like you race the first year on a one, two, five when there was a two fifty F there. And it's like, there's other contracts that you could take that you didn't. And it's like, but there was a reason why you didn't. And then this happened. And it, it's like, your life is just this unfolding. You know a lot about my life. 
Yeah, I'd re- <laughs> I'd research interviews. Yeah, <laughs> got to research. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like you you get into this, like your life is just momentum. Yeah. Everyone, I think everyone can relate to that, yeah. you know, and maybe people don't even think about that in the time. Like I'm dealing with problems right now that yeah. are a result of like all this shit that happened like, Year, it's just like yeah. it's like years ago you make these small decisions yeah. and then it's like at some point down the road and so you're kind of way less free to make decisions than what you feel like you are in the moment i and also i think the decisions that you make that you think are small are gigantic in the Dude, future for sure know? and the repercussions that that come from it are, are they hurt yeah you know um it's I know it's life. I, I get yeah. that it's life, you know, and, and that's why I, me being 36 years old, um, but there's still so much life to live. So I can try to, yeah. you know, teach people or help people, and at least in my industry and, and, or, or, or outside the industry that literally suffer now and live like a king later, yeah. you know, just put the Dude, work in. it's so true. You know, like grit your teeth right now, dig your heels in the ground and fucking put the work in and let's yeah. go, you yeah. know, right now. There's no better time to start than right now. And if you don't start now, tomorrow's not promised. It's just like so, the easiest equation. Yep. Hard now, easy tomorrow. Yep. Easy, easy today, now. hard tomorrow. Hard tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it's but so I simple. I never had anyone tell me that. Yeah. You know, I never had anyone teach me any of that. And then as my career went on, that's when I around the right people and my career started turning around. You know, like like Ezra and and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he was probably one of the biggest impacts of my life as far as turning my career around, um, getting me on the right training schedule and, and, or, or, or let's say, uh, writing program. Cause he was my writing coach. Yeah. So, but dude, I argue with him every freaking day, every day, still mentally, like even in 2013, every day, fuck you, dude. No. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, no, but I would go and do it. Then I'd learn how to me arguing was my way of coping with myself to get through it. Yeah. And, yeah. but when I learned how to change that mindset, to where it was like, dude, let, let's go. Like, yeah. that's all you got. Then it became fun. Yeah. Um. So that's where it's, it's like, you know, when, I, when I'm when i training Julian, it's the same thing. Like, dude, trust me, right now you're struggling. You're hating me. You're hating life. You're hating everything. Just, just give me a couple of weeks. Just give me a month, you know? Yeah. And then when it gets there, just give me another couple of days. You know, it's always that thing. And then when he gets through it, he's like, oh, fuck, that was easy. Yeah. I'm like, only because in your mind, you only had a couple more days. You yeah. know what I mean? But once you got through it and then, you realize that it was okay. Yeah. You know, same with same with Benny and, and the shit that he goes through. And then, you know, it, it's it's all part of it. Even though Benny, you know, we signed him with a new team, which was great. You know, he had to put a lot of work in with that bike on the off season. Sure, yeah. A lot of work with that bike in the off season to where where he is now stepping finally up. You know, it, it's been a long process to get there. And yeah. I've had to talk him off the ledge multiple times and honestly i give him credit for you know enduring the some of the stuff that he did so where he's at now he's at a really good mental place so me helping him through that i was like okay cool like that's awesome you know you, you did you know you did it you, yeah you made it through what you never thought you could have so it's just shit like that that i get jazzed on now. yeah yeah that, you know, as being old i guess and being a vet and just looking back and 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 knowing what you know what i fucked up on and what i did wrong yeah it's not in vain you know yeah so it's good what what was it like training wise as a kid was it just like so much bike time it was <laughs> or was there a lot did you train a lot then so yeah my, we would get up every morning and either go well it depends on on she at first before before we got into the whole training program with an actual training company um which was tied to Sports Academy in Florida, in Tallahassee. Before that was my mom. My mom did all the training. You know, it was push ups, sit ups, um, jump rope, punching bag, pull ups, dips, yeah, almost every day, every day, every morning, every night. And you know, if you didn't, she'd put her fist underneath your chest, and if you didn't touch the fist with your chest, you literally had to start over. And you could be on push up fifty, and you had to do a hundred. And you could be a push up fifty. And not touch it and didn't count. Or you had to start over if you if you sorry, didn't count. But yeah, if you drop if you stop. dropped the knee or if you stopped, you had to start over. Yeah. You know how many times I started over? A like <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, then it was the bike rides or it was the runs, you know, and, and the bike rides, she would set her cruise control 
at, you know, 17, 18 miles an hour and she'd give us a head start, set it at that pace and we'd have uh, yeah, to be her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. she, but she wouldn't move. I promise you she wouldn't move. She would not hit the brakes. She would have ran us over. She thought it would have been funny, you know, but that's just the way that we grew up. Um, the run, the running, I, I, I never, I never did. I, I'm just going to be straight up honest. Like everyone else ran, I watched. Was it because of your knees? Like you no, just I just hated, it. just hated it. I hated running with the passion. Still? Uh, oh, still to this day. I hate running. Have it, you ever given it like a good crack? I did. And, and four or five months ago, I was really getting after it. And I fucked my back up. And uh, I've been hardly been able to move for four months. I'm just now starting to get back into training because of how bad my back became from, from running. From running. Fuck. Um, so, but no, before that, it was just I running was so tough. And my body just didn't Especially like it. Especially in that heat, bro. Yeah, it's it heat, cold. It didn't matter. I hated it. Yeah. It was, and I'm honest. Like, I honestly, she wanted you to be sweating when you came home. So we went early morning. It was dew on the grass. I'd literally put dew all over my body and I'd go home and I was sweating, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's when I wish I had someone that was, dude, quit your shit. Yeah. Just run half this distance and, to, you know, the next day run a little bit more and the next day run a little bit more. Yeah. And then eventually it would be get easier. Yeah. That's what I started doing. I started enjoying running before I hurt my back. Like I was starting getting into, you know, I was doing 10 Ks and stuff and, and I'm like, you know what? Like I can do this. And then boom. But it's like, oh, but so now how'd you hurt your back? Was it running? no idea running one day I was running and it just, it locked. Oh. And I honestly couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get into my truck. It dropped me to my knees when I sit up out of chair, when I stand up out of a chair, it dropped me to my knees um it was to the point to where i was in the most pain of my entire life and it, it took four months to finally calm down dude um injection after injection after injection in my back just to get it to calm down um and then i also did a decompression machine which i think flared everything back up because it what like just the inversion table no, thing? decompression where it pulled me oh, apart but i think yeah. my body's been so used to being jammed yeah that when it pulled me a little bit my muscles went into full just spasms. Freaked out, yeah. And they're like, "Nope, that does not." Have you ever done the inversion table? Yeah, I have one at my house. Okay. It it hurts my head so bad. Yeah. That it's yeah. not worth it for me. Yeah. Um, but I have done it. Try to get my back to release, but it didn't do anything. Do you uh, have you ever heard of foundation training? This, like, uh, so this guy, um, Eric Goodman, he actually he did the podcast a few weeks ago, but it's the. It's a training that like Chase does a lot of. Like, oh yeah, 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 like and just just like the, like the yeah. arms out and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, that stuff. Maybe you should like look into something like that because, <laughs> dude, that guy, man, we he, he come in here and then as soon as I saw him, I was like, Jesus Christ, like just the posture on the mm -hmm. guy and Chase and Jet, like same thing. I I feel like I I did it, I did it a little bit. I I kind of stopped before I really like felt the benefits of it, but like. So you knew that one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hey, I'm that guy. I'm, fu <laughs> I'm fully, I'm fully that guy too. That's why I can yeah. just, I can, yeah. I can accept it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, maybe something like that might help, help out with the back. No, I mean, obviously, obviously, it was, it was part of, you know, I was training for a half Ironman when I did it. Uh, so it was yeah. the running, the yeah. swimming, the biking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm so used to being able to throw whatever I want at my body. Yeah. And I wasn't in the shape. Hey, we're 36, that, bro. That, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't in the shape that I should have been doing as much as I was doing. Yeah. And my, my back, my core wasn't strong enough and my back just said no. Yeah. Um, but I felt it on the run and it was only from running downhill. Mm, and I yeah, just like big, just, impacts. just the impact. How much do you weigh now? I don't even know. Probably 205. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, 205, 210 if I'm lucky. Yeah. I don't even know. I have not weighed myself in seven years. Yeah, I don't okay. plan on weighing myself anymore. <laughs> <You sound laughs> I, like my wife. I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's I'm I'm getting back into training now. Yeah. So it, it's it's going to come back. I'm going to drop the weight. Yeah. But no, the foundation training. You know, I used to do stuff like that. Um, my body doesn't really like so much of that because I have a lot of really 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 bad joints. And, yeah, and, and yeah. my knees still can't hold up. Yeah. Um. But that's really really good stuff. Yeah. Um. He also does a lot of strength training too and, you know, fast twitch and stuff like that. Yeah. But I watch him do the foundation stuff every day before he goes out and, or oh, sorry, Chase. On, the, on, the, on Saturdays. Ah. He does it before he goes yeah, yeah. Um, out for practice or out for a main event. He does that stuff. You know, yeah. he, he looks like the, 
you know, karate kid. You know, yeah. Just, just uh, Mr. Miyagi. Dude, the first time so, I did it, I was just shaking like a leaf. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's like legit. I got a bunch of friends. I, one of my friends is a pro surfer. Yeah. And dude, every day, just religious for years, just fully loves it. Eh? Yeah. I mean, some people, some people can can latch on to it i think julian would be one that would latch on to something like that yeah um i should send him a link to it benny honestly i he is a freak in nature when it comes to anything like that he really? being at six six five or six six whatever he is he's super flexible super strong and and weird so he's just an athlete he's i i, I wouldn't call him an athlete yeah. <laughs> i'm just kidding Benny. <laughs> um no, he, but he's, he's just a strong like human being, but super, super flexible and can bend and, and do things in, in weird ways. And, and it, it's pretty incredible for how big he is. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and Julian is, is fit, strong, young, small, you know, uh, kid. Um, so polar opposites, obviously. Yeah. And Julian, I think, has the body type to be able to do like the foundation training stuff yeah. to where you do more localized and and, and body movements. And, and I have him do shoulder exercises and leg exercises that are more like foundation exercises. Yeah. Um, same with Benny. Um, just not to the extent of what Chase does or, yeah. or, you know, the guy that you said you had on the podcast. Yeah. I don't, I not, not to that extent, no. Yeah um the running thing's interesting though eh? like last year i was same thing same deal i was just like hated running I yeah fucking, i'll rather cycle there's like yep. so rather go surfing so the fun shit like whatever's fun <laughs> that's what i wanted yep. to do but i we moved to dubai last year we spent like five months there and i was just so frustrated of like i couldn't i wasn't riding i didn't yep. have like my regular mates around and i just like had this energy you know, that I kind of had to get out, just went, bought a pair of running shoes and yeah. I just started running. And I, I did a lot of zone yeah. running, just zone two. And I would just be like 40 minutes a day, 60 minutes, 40 minutes, was doing, you know, like 100 Ks a week kind of thing. And fuck, I just I clicked and I started enjoying running, you know, like it, but it sucked for so long. For so long. For like weeks, man. Your legs would just <laughs> feel like fucking lead every day after after you run but then after a while you kind of you, you do break through and then yeah, you, you can start to enjoy yeah. it and then like what was it one day last week i just went home just full forest gun mode just i felt like running. <laughs> no watch no nothing I just didn't know like running <laughs> didn't know where didn't put my heart rate strap on yeah got my shoes run literally until yep. like the train tracks basically like i couldn't run on them anymore and then ran, <laughs> ran back up it was like fucking this is the best you know for me i like treadmills most yeah. people don't like treadmills, but I do. And I don't mind treadmills either, to be honest. The wife's like, why do you like a treadmill? I'm like, well, if I get really, really, really tired, I can step off and I'm home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I get really, really tired on the road and I'm eight miles out, I got eight miles back home. Yeah. And I know that's not the right mindset, but it, for me with running, that's, that's where hey, it's whatever, at for me. Whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes. I will do eight miles on a treadmill, but eight miles on the road... Because for some reason, some days I can feel like I can run and I'm fine. Yeah. Some days I literally, I can't run. But those are the long days for me that I, you know, when I was training for the Ironman. Yeah. Um, so that's where, that's where I feel like the treadmill would be good for me. Because on those days, I can run the treadmill. I'll make sure it happens in one way or another. And when I get off the treadmill. I'm home. I'm home. I can sit on the couch. Yes, I can, I, I can stretch right there. I don't have to do anything crazy. And, yeah. and I have, you know, my, my couch, my TV. I can just do what I want. Um, so that's kind of, that's, that's my thought process on the running. I like the treadmill because I don't have time to watch all the racing that I like. So I love MotoGP, okay. F1, okay, MXGP, yep. Supercross. Like there's <laughs> all this shit. There's yep. like eight hours of racing a week that I love to watch that I just don't have time to watch. Yeah. So that's where the treadmill is a good thing for me because I'm like, iPad. Well, then, you're, then you're bouncing and then it gets a, then it gets annoying yeah but you know you just put, <laughs> i just got like the big ipad i put it up yep. on the thing and just and go but it's hard to like do the heart rate thing when you've got like a race going you're like getting 20 minutes into the race and like dudes are battling and just like yep. fucking do, 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 do. you're just like let's fucking go boys yeah no i only i only watch supercross and motocross so for me i don't have many hours a week to to watch yeah so for me it's usually just I don't even listen to music when I run my bicycle or I run anymore. 
I yeah. do not listen to music because I figured, hey, if I'm training for a half Ironman or full Ironman You're one day, gonna have it I'm not going to have it. I might as well teach myself that to get used to it. And now that I have for a long time now, it's it's nice. Like, dude, it's so dude, nice. Dude, I agree. Yeah, I can go and be in my own little head. Like, I went today with, with Julian, and we talked a few times here and there, but, dude, I'm just so, like, yeah. I'm so used to riding with no one. I'm used to just being in my own thing and, and no music and – you know, having someone like Julian to ride with or, or, or Benny or, or anyone I ride with is nice. Don't get me wrong, you know, but you, when you're so used to riding alone, you have to figure out how to, to keep yourself company. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's good too, I think. Yeah. Like even we, we just distract ourselves constantly <laughs> with, with, if it's music, podcasts, yeah. like yeah. there's just so much time, like so yeah. many times in the day where like you just reach and turn. Yeah. Shit the, my van that I got at the moment, the stereo is not working. And it's like change driving in a sense because like that's normally the only time that I really yeah. listen to like music or podcasts or even like do th- phone calls through the through the car. Bluetooth, yeah. And now I'm just, I just like don't have it and it's a half hour each way to the studio and it's like actually pretty nice. The same thing with the running, you know, you can yeah. just – the other one for me is washing my bike. Cause you yeah, can't, I, don't, I don't like that. You can't really – Dirt bikes? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. You, I'm guessing you wouldn't have washed too many dirt bikes. I actually Maybe a you lot in yeah, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, when you were a, a kid. lot, but yeah. also, like, <laughs> also again, I used to, you know, back when Oakley used to send their riders, you know, eighty sets of goggles every time they would do it. I I would pay someone in two pairs of Oakleys to go wash my bike. <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> you, <were> lazy. <laughs> well, no, only if it was really muddy. Yeah, if yeah. it was really muddy, dude, come on, like forty dollars to wash my bike or, yeah. or, or, or whatever it was. You know, <laughs> yeah. it just. Washing the bike for me was was the one thing that I absolutely hated, and changing the filter, I I didn't like because I I don't like oily hands, but it, I could do it. But no, washing the bike was if it was really really muddy in that Georgia clay and it, and it hardened. God, oh, it, it would yeah. take you forty five minutes to an hour to wash the damn bike. Yeah, that's a forty five minutes an hour. I could do something way more productive than washing a dirt bike. Yeah, you know, like sit on the couch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, no, it, it's washing my bicycle. On the other hand, I can get into. Okay, I can get into washing the bicycle just because it just it looks so good. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just looks good. But dirt bikes, not so much. Well, that's I think that's another area where I'm like no music, no yep. because like it's fucking loud. You got to pressure wash your guy. It's not like you really can listen to much anyway. Yep. But yeah, I feel like those times. You know who like Robbie Madison never listens to anything in the car, just full silence, just once like whenever yeah. he gets in the car. Yeah, but that's psychotic. Yeah. You gotta listen to something. Yeah, but that's look at what he does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I got rid of XM. What is it? Yeah, Sirius Sirius XM. Yeah. I got rid of that, uh, so I don't have radio. But I do have my podcast, and I do have um, my Pandora yeah. that I listen to. Um, Still on Pandora. Yeah, dude. I don't. What else is there? Spotify. Nah, I don't like Spotify. <laughs> that's insane. Pan, Pandora goes right to the car. Yeah, um, true. It when at home on on you know your entertainment whatever it is that i have throughout my house yeah it's pandora yeah um the other one was it was like napster or something but that was that was a while ago it, well it costs no even they have it now do I they think. still have napster yeah, i want to say it's napster damn but it was it was, it was like a freaking way too much money for me to have to listen to music i'm like no yeah i'll just pandora is cheap and we're good to go you know it's Hey, I'm frugal. What can I say? What's the what's the podcast like rotation that you listen to? Is it all moto or no? Do I don't listen. Any, I don't listen to many moto podcasts. Yeah. Um, what, what's the podcast go tos then? <sighs> hmm. What is it? Andy, Andy Priscilla. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah, listen yeah, to him yeah, quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. Um, and Ultimate Human. Okay. Which is with, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know his name i just know his ultimate human yeah um i like that one too it teaches about breath work um the ice baths um and any other uh, biohacking yeah and everything like that uh gary i think his name's gary yeah um i'm not good with names man <laughs> um but those are pretty much the only two that i'll really listen to on my drive and then yeah. i'll put the music on or, or i'll listen to uh audibles yeah, I, okay. I listen to books because I, I I have a hard time reading them since I hit my head. Yeah, because my eyeballs they really do hurt. Yeah. Um. So I listen to books when I. What's What's some good books that you've been into recently? 
I mean, David Goggins. Because you got heaps of driving. So David like, Goggins books are, are unreal. Yeah, he's a GA. They are unreal. I could listen to those books over and over and over, you know, uh, both of them. Um, the 48 Laws of Power is oh, one I'm yeah. on right now. Yeah, okay. Um, that one's taken me a long time to get through because – they start to it starts to get so hard to follow along while I'm driving in traffic and stuff like that. So I yeah, gotta stop you gotta it. Kind of go back. Um, but I think that's good anyway. So, in books like yeah. I think it's good to go back and listen. I've actually never read Forty Eight Laws of Power. It, it, it's it's a heavy book. Mm. It's a heavy book. Um, it's fucking good though. From what it, everybody I've ever heard that has read it, and yeah. like a lot of influential people have read that book. It it puts you in in different perspective of life. Realistically, of of is it like what's real what's not real you know mm. like is this friend real is this friend not it makes you rethink a lot of different things because what it, it's saying that enemies do and what it's saying how mm. people are to you you're like i see you you know and and it, it's just it's just a different way of looking at um yourself should i say yeah um i like that book a lot um but honestly the Lance Armstrong book was really good. Yeah. Um, but hands down, the David, the two gay, uh, two David Goggins books. Yeah. Were by far, probably the best books I've ever listened to. Man, David Goggins is an example of how you can change your life by just deciding to change your life. Yeah, that, that's a that's a whole nother life. Like he's he literally lived two fucking lives, bro. <laughs> he, he's on another planet, though. You know, yeah. and, and there's a guy in town. Um, and like obviously that's that was a Navy SEAL, and he you know worked with Goggins a few times. Oh, and he goes, really? dude, he's like, he's like he he's too extreme yeah, for, for a sure. normal. But you kind of like day. need that guy to like like the North yeah. Star. It's like okay, I don't want to be that guy, but I want to be more like that. Guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you. But the thing is, like, is there an in between? You know? Yeah. If if you're going for that guy, like are you ever going to be satisfied unless you are, mm. you know? And, and for, for me, like, yeah, he gives me motivation to go out and get up every day because the whole, you know, you're not given motivation. I understand that. Yeah. You know, he will, he was three or 285 pounds, whatever he was, 300 pounds. And now he's the fittest man on earth. If you want to call him that, yeah. you know, or the hardest man on earth, whatever you want to say. Fuck, I'd give him that title. Yeah. You know, the, the craziest guy, but it's literally his his mindset that he has of just keep going, just keep pushing through it that one more time, just yeah. keep going. You know, I know you're I know you're hurting, but you got to push through the pain. On and when you get through that pain, you know it's gone. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where listening to those books was like, okay, like I know I've been in pain my you know most of my life from all my surgeries and all my injuries, you know, and and I'm telling myself that I can't do it because of my injuries or, yeah, or whatever yeah. it may be. And it's like no, 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 no. So that to me is why I like listening to him, you know, like yeah. I, any kind of, any kind of snippets that I get from him, like the motivational quotes and stuff, uh, you know, it's like, okay, cool. Like I can, I can relate to that. I don't want to be him Yeah. because that's, that's extreme. I, do I want to run like him? A hundred, I would love to run like him, but I don't want to be him, Yeah. you know? And, and, uh, but yeah, I just think you like need those people to yeah. remind you how capable we are yeah it's pretty, pretty like we're crazy. all so much more capable yeah. than what we do on a day-to-day basis you know like he did a hundred mile run off the couch no yep. training yeah no how just just mentally that's that's, needed that's to do. mental dude like i can't do a three mile run off the couch <laughs> my legs say no yeah you know and my legs say no you're done yeah but well it's like your legs don't say no your mind tells you that your legs are saying <laughs> unless they're, unless they're really cramped up and they're saying no. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, then, yeah. but you just play it out to like the extreme of him. He'd probably just like limp. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. limp, limp along. It's like we're just so much more no, hundred percent capable than what yeah. we think we are in just like every single scenario. You yeah, know? it's no. like exactly what you said. It's just like one more time, one, one more, more time. rep, like one more mile, one you know, one more yeah. rep, one more session. You know, one more. I don't like the one more lap thing. I yeah, always get in trouble with the one yeah. more lap. Yeah. I, another lap. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's the motivation from him is it's quite good, I would say. Yeah. You know, it, it gives you that, yeah, I'm gonna do it. But the, the issue is when you go to bed that night, you're like, Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. But when that alarm clock goes off, you're like, ah, this bed's too nice. <laughs> this bed's nice. My cup of coffee, you know, 
my my coffee sounds good. You know, I I don't want to get out of bed right now. It's that part right there that changes or makes the difference between a loser and a champion realistically at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for me lately, it's like my daughter always walks in and gives me morning hugs. Like it's it's my thing. Like I love when she gives me morning hugs, you know, and and for me to be gone on yeah, the mornings miss, miss that I, yeah. I, I don't like missing that so yeah. for me like when i get up i don't get up and go do that i wait for her to give me a hug yeah and then i go and do it um you know and and my son and i have you know our thing to where in the afternoons like we do our deal um but n- nothing is taken away from my morning time yeah um so when i'm out here i can do it in the mornings but when i'm home no dude, that's that's my morning time with my with, with little Bryn and 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 that's about it for me. Then I get up and do it. Yeah. So that's where I get my motivation. It's funny. I think there's a book. I'd love you to read Atomic Habits. Have you ever heard of it? Mm. Dude, I fucking tell everyone to read. That's what that tattoo there is like literally from it. But this book is just like fucking mind blowing. Yeah. Around just like habits and habit forming. But it's yeah. like we kind of only think about, oh, I want this good habit. Yeah. You know, how do I get into this good, how do I get a habit of running or going to the gym? It's like, okay, you need to just realize that you already have habits. They're labeled good or bad, but everything you do is yeah. habitual. Like if yeah. you you have a habit of, this not you personally, but like <laughs> for a person that wants to get in the habit of running, it's like, okay, you already have the habit of not running. <laughs> you know, so like you yeah. do, you do yeah. have the habit. You just yeah. have the opposite one of what you want to have and it's like i think we think that we like don't have any habit so it's like we're not we're not uh losing out on anything because we're just like we're at zero but it's like no you're not at zero you're actually habitually going the other way your your negative habits yeah 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 you're in the red bro so it's like we feel this safety in not thinking that oh i'm gonna get this good habit it's like no you're actively doing the bad habit right now every day and the compound effect that you would be getting from running every day you're getting the same compounding effect on the backwards end yeah and like that sounds so easy and so (laughs) simple i'd never thought about it yeah and as soon as that that word like hit my brain i was like oh fuck (laughs) like just had a full freak out over it almost you know discipline habits and mindset are what what create what you want to do yeah. You know, if you think about it, you got to be disciplined in order to do the hard stuff. You know, you <clears throat> you got to have the good habits, but you only get the good habits from the from the discipline. Yeah. And the mindset runs it all. Yeah. So it's like, okay, how do I have that? Well, <laughs> wake up and do it. Yeah. There's there's no other way around it. You got to start one day. Today right now, you start. And guess what? When you get up, it's going to be harder. You got to do it again. But that's where the discipline comes into play. You yeah. know, and, and there's a lot of things that come into it, but the habits, 100%, your form habits that are bad, you might not think they're bad, but they're terrible habits. Yeah. You know, and, and I know you say you pay for them on the back end, but you pay for them right here in the front end of the belly, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and your cardiovascular shape is is diminished, um, you know, especially if you go off HRV, I'm basically dead. Um, <laughs> what, what's your HRV? Uh, it depends. What, what, what's the range? Uh, eight, nine. No. Ten. HRV on like Garmin HRV. No, I do my my aura. Oh, okay. Yeah, We're yeah. running on a different thing. My my aura, my, yeah. But I have a high resting. I've always had a high resting. Resting heart rate. Yeah, I've yeah. always had a high resting heart rate. So a higher resting heart rate, lower HRV. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, I always joke around. With my guys like they send me theirs and they're so they're they're fucking high. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like seven. And they're oh. like, I'm dead. Just, yeah, 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 <laughs> just yeah. put me in the put me in the ground. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and but no, sometimes I'll get up to like 25 and, and 30, but then the next day I'm right back down to eight. Yeah. Um, but I honestly I don't I don't train like I used to train, so I'm not really yeah. too into it. But I just find it funny that people get so into it and they're like, Oh, what's yours? I'm like, eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, you're alive. Yeah. Um I I run the Garmin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I must work different, like the the number system. But yeah, Jack Dorn. I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of him, but he's uh in like Formula Two, and well, he's a Formula One reserve driver now. But he's like he's not racing this year. But dude, his is like one forty four. Yeah. I'm like what the? F-? I think the highest mine's ever been is like one twenty, one twenty two or something. And yeah, yeah he lives at one forty four. I'm like holy fuck. Yeah, Julian's dude. up there. 
Yeah, I bet. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, I'm I'm nine. I mean, I honestly, I didn't look at mine last night, but I I pulled up real quick. But yeah, I wonder what like the equivalent. I just wouldn't know what the equivalent is. It's I would say it's pretty similar. The only difference is with with the watch with the watch on. You know, if it gets tighter, if it gets loose during the night, Mm. um, that's that could probably be the only the only difference. Um, but all in all, I don't feel like it's too far off. When when Julian wears his aura and he wears his uh, Garmin, the Garmin, the Garmin is is like three or four beats always higher than yeah, the aura. Okay. Um, so he kind of goes off of. Uh, we can go off of that. So if you're four beats higher in a Garmin than you are in aura, so let's just say if you're you know sixty four on the Garmin, you're sixty on the aura. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. HRV. Yeah, it sounds like a completely different. Yeah. Number. What's what's Julian's resting heart rate? Wow, he was. 40 yeah okay yeah Yeah, that is low yeah 40 uh 40 to 43 is about average yeah um hrv he's you know i don't really ever ask too much about the hrv he tells me when he's really high yeah (laughs) Yeah, just to show off yeah um but he's over the hundreds yeah well over the hundreds um and then i send him a picture of mine so (laughs) but no his resting my resting when i was in shape was low but I was in really, really, really good shape. Now I'm 58, 60. Yeah. You know, I'm which I'm, is like a normal person. Yeah, but I'm up there. Yeah. But that's that's so my higher resting. But I'd have sleep apnea as well, supposedly. So it's also uh, plays into that role. Yeah. They did a whole sleep study on me. I had to sleep in some stupid oh, really? bed connected to wires all over the place. Dude, I kind of want to do that. Eh? Uh, I had a freaking sleep do apnea, you mass sleep apnea. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my wife hits me so freaking many times. Yeah, I'm the same dude. It's like, what? What did I do? You're snoring. Okay, then just, <laughs> yeah. just tap me or move me. <laughs> yeah, you don't gotta smack me. <laughs> yeah. But um, let's see. Oh, I was I was 16 last night. Right. So I, my resting was 56. So I'm going. To look at that. Look, I'm just, see, I I cycled one day and I'm back. Yeah, you're fucking back. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, I fully recommend the Garmin thing to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, I, that's all I wear. Yeah, it's but, so good to like. I bought one for my mom, bought one for my mother in law, like everyone. Just like, hey, like, you know, Wes Williams, you'd know Wes. Yeah. yeah. I made him get one. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, just start yep. fucking living by this shit. Like, look <laughs> at your sleep. Yep. Get your eight hours. Like, if you're not sleeping good, change your life. Like, yep. you have to sleep properly. Yeah. It's so crazy important, and it was so overlooked yep. in my life for so same, long. Same here. Oh, my yep. God. It makes a difference. Well, that's dude. why I like the Aura Ring. It's yeah. super simple. Yeah. Super easy. It's there. I mean, you don't even really notice it, and your finger, you know, for me, doesn't change a whole lot. Yeah. Um, And it's not really too tight or ever too loose. Yeah. Um, where the watch sometimes for me is. Yeah. Um, But, no, I, I love Garmin. It, it's what I've used for so long. Um, but no, the aura ring for me, for my HRV or, or even my resting or, or my sleep and my, and my steps and stuff. I, I enjoy it cause it, it gives me more steps than the Garmin does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, that's so good. Yeah. Uh, Julian's a fucking good kid. eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think he's going to be really, really good. He can be. Yeah. He can be. And, and honestly it's, again, it's a mindset. Mm. you know and, and and no one's looking at the perspective of he's never been in a situation the where he's in right now you know and and it's like he was a b rider one year ago he was a b rider he's won two loretta motos his entire life he's won two loretta motos one title but two motos and the two motos that he won were last year and he won glendale and he won new jersey he had broken ribs at new jersey um, so that's why it, it was hard for him but he still won it you know, but regardless, that's all he's ever done as an amateur, you know, and, and he was never the guy to be looked at. He was never the guy that was, uh, oh, my God, just watch Julian or, you know, yeah, yeah. when you he lines up, no kid. one was worried about him. Yeah. You know, if there was 10 guys lined up and Julian lined up as the 11th, he wouldn't have been one that they were worried about. Yeah. You know, and, and then he shows up and starts making, a, you know, making noise, you know, and starts putting lap times down, putting motos down, getting in shape because we were training together at that time. And then he gets his ride and then shows up at Anaheim and does what he does at Anaheim. Now he's known. Mm. Now he's one of those guys that when he shows up, they know he's there. Yeah, You know, they're waiting for him. They're waiting to see how fast he's going to go. Is he going to put it all together tonight? He is one of those guys. They, 
they know he can go as fast as they can. And it's just like, okay, he's never been in this situation to where he's led laps or, or been a main guy, let alone as an amateur. Yeah, now, not now even as an amateur. As a pro, you know, and, and all this mental shit that, that's going through his head is like excitement and nervous and, and belief and doubt and, yeah. and all this stuff. It's like, okay, like, let's calm it down. Let's bring it back down, you know, and, and let's learn from what you've done. You know, this, this whole year is a learning year. Again, you were B last year. And had never really won anything. You were B, okay. Now you're now you're a top dog. And and how do we how do we move forward? Mm. Um, so for him, yeah, it, it's changing those little things to where they're not failures or lessons, you know. And it's okay to fail. That's how you learn. Um, and the two mud races were were big failures, but he still made the mains in the mud, mm. you know. But they were they were horrible races. But yeah, he still tried. He still got up. He fell seven freaking times and still picked his bike up. You know what I mean? He could have just said, dude, I'm done. Yeah. You know, but and on one part, he was off the side of the track and he's only five foot freaking seven and having to pick a 400 pound bike up now because it's full of mud with no leverage. He still did it and still, you know, still finished the race. So he has a lot of grit. He has a lot yeah. of determination. Yeah. You know, it, it's just putting all the pieces of the puzzle together for him. Which again, no one understands that he's never been in this situation. Yeah. So as soon as he figures out that he belongs and truly believes he belongs, I think uh, I think he's going to be a force to reckon with. Yeah. He. Um. Yeah. He's just super impressive. Like obviously yep. to do what he did at Futures last year, yep. and then to get the ride this year and to be putting in like I think a one he was like unreal to be yep. honest. Yeah. You know, like I think he's yeah he's a kind of a sleeper that kid. Yeah, but he didn't know how to jump whoops. So he yeah. couldn't go into the to figure out how, how to did jump the them? KTM group not have that dialed. Like even Prado said the same thing. He's like at the test track in all the the they riding jumpers. that I've done, we have not done jumpers one time. They were they Prado said the exact same thing. But they weren't jumpers. The whoops at Anaheim. No, at, 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 the, at, test at, track. at the test track. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. Weren't yeah. Jumpers. That's what I'm saying. How how and did they not have something like that there? Because realistically, uh, you got to think of the era that everyone came from. That's there, and, and yeah. including myself is we all skimmed them yeah you know like if we had to jump whoops like it was villain last, was the only one last resort and <laughs> yeah. marvin yeah you know and and everyone skimmed the whoops no matter how big they were no matter how bad they were they skimmed them unless there was like six then yeah we jumped the six at the end of the night because they were just hot out but we all skimmed them so the and he struggled at skimming whoops julian did struggled so we really worked on that part you know, we, we conquered one, but then when we got to Anaheim and, you know, then they decided to come up with this whole dozer build and nine whoops and stuff like that as, as a year, you know, as it went on, it's like, okay, then they started jumping them and they, they got to the point to where they were pretty steep jumpers that night and he didn't know what to do. Yeah. So the next, that next week we went back and we jumped them, yeah. but we learned from that. Yeah. You know, and because I've never taught anyone how to freaking jump whoops. Yeah, yeah. Like my one of my specialties was, was skimming whoops, them. Yeah. You know, so for me, it's like let's teach you how to get through them fast. Like the last week and a half, I don't think I don't think I could have beat him through the whoops at the track skimming them. And then yesterday, I made him jump them multiple times just so it had an during the moto we switched it up. Yeah, you just got to be ready boom, to switch. Boom, boom. Yeah. And he's like, I'm like, did you did you understand what I was putting on the pit board? He goes, yeah. He's like, I, I'm like, do you know why I did that? And he's like, yeah, because you needed me to change it. And I'm like, I needed you to mentally know that in the middle of a main event that you can't switch it if you have to switch it and go right back to skimming it if you have to go right back to skimming it. Yeah. You know, you need to have that mindset of being, okay, I can go here. Or I can go this. It doesn't matter. I can do it all. Yeah. And we learned from that failure, which was him not being able to jump. We learned, okay, now we got to learn how to jump them. Yeah. So all my guys now jump the whoops and skim the whoops. Um, but most of the guys that I work with can jump the whoops regardless. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, same with, with him, with his breathing, um, or his, we were learning things on the bike. We we're learning things with him and his, his ribs and, and all sorts of things throughout all the stuff. So it's, it's, it's always something with him that goes on behind the scenes that no one knows about, yeah. you know, but he's every single day he wakes up to the time he goes to bed it's everything that kid has yeah. and at 17 years old it's incredible to watch yeah he's very like yeah. dunjesk in a way yeah like he really does from he's a me. fucking savage yeah day in and day out and i'm not saying that because i work with him but if you were to get up with him and watch him throughout the day i 
he's a he's a savage. Yeah. He does he does shit that he doesn't want to do. Yeah. Like he is that version of of what you know I wish I could have been. Yeah. You know, and and I, I'm glad that I was able to force him into doing stuff like that. You know, and Benny's Benny's the same way. But for for Julian, it's literally every day he gets up, he gives a hundred percent of everything he does. There's no cutting corners for him anymore. There's at the track, whatever it may be, there's no quitting. You know, he could be come on, he can come off a moto, his second moto for the day, and be dead tired. But he could have been dead tired halfway, but you wouldn't have known. Mm. You know, he's he could have he could have given up, but he he finished. Yeah. So it's just there's just little things like that, and he gets so excited, and he gets you know that little that little you know childish you know motivation. So it, it, it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, I was at uh I was at like a just a coffee shop. Yeah. Just in Temecula one day just like working by myself and he fully walked up and introduced himself and shit and I was like fuck coffee yeah. shop in Temecula yeah in Taza uh, no it was Better Buzz Better Buzz yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so he and he just walked up and I was like hmm. like not many kids do that shit these days you know what I mean yeah like it, uh, I feel like it might sound small but to me that that's like quite a big indicator of a person's character yeah you know like he knew who i was i actually didn't know who he was like i'd never seen him without, <laughs> exactly i'd no never one. seen him without yeah. helmet on like yeah. i knew who he was yeah. but i didn't know what he looked like yeah and he just walked up introduced himself to He's me a like, young fabio with the hair yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and I, I was like hmm, like that's really really yeah. fucking cool because he knew who i was i didn't know i knew who he was but i didn't know what he yeah, looked yeah, like I get your point. and yeah. it's like to just do that shows quite a bit of character yeah. and that young generation just isn't like that and i think even no. those small things they will text you hey i'm you know i'm i'm davy yeah <laughs> that's that's what they'll do yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> he just texted me how's the podcast going oh, sick. Um, <laughs> but but no he he's he he is a good kid yeah you know, he really is a good kid um he's fun to work with he's very coachable um and Trust me, if he wasn't, I wouldn't be driving out here as much as I do. 16 yeah. hours a week of driving is, it's a lot. That is a lot. It's dude. a lot of driving. Wait, um, how long ago did you guys move to have Seven a years ago. What was the reason? Like That's where she's from. Uh, yep, yep, yep. yep. That's where Brittany's from. Yeah. So we moved there. Her family's awesome with my kids. Um, one of them to be around family. Yeah, shit makes a difference. Um, and, you know, it, it's nice. It, it's, it's, it's. It's fun having, you know, if we want to go on a date night, if we want to go somewhere, you know, her parents can watch the kids. Um, my kids love it there. So that's why we moved there. Um, as far as anything else goes, it's busy right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hella busy. When when COVID hit, our, our town stormed. Really? Yeah, no one, because we didn't have any kind of, you know, restrictions. restrictions. We had yeah. zero restrictions. Uh, and it was booming. You know, and and um, they haven't left. Fuck, they're still there. They're still there. I think they're all just waiting for the next one to come, so they know we're not going to restrict it. Yeah, so yeah. So they're just they're just staying, staying for a good time. Fuck, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, that's such a cool place. Yeah. To, to be though, no, it's, it's probably cool. good to be a little bit out of the scene, though. You know, I don't mind being out of the scene, but I'm really far out of the scene. Yeah. As far as the airport's far from me, training's far from me. Um, the roads around Havasu for cycling, the roads are horrid. Um, even though today's bike ride with Julian, I'm like, dude, these are no better, yeah, <laughs> no better than Havasu. So I guess I can't complain too much, but the difference is I can only go out and back. Yeah. You know, I, I can't do much more. So if I want to do a 50 mile bike ride, it's out and back four freaking times. Yeah. Uh, that's highly annoying. Yeah. Um, mountain biking, it's like riding on the moon, you know, all the yeah, just rocks, rocks, and, rocks shit. and rocks and rocks, no traction ever. Yeah. But it's still, it's still fun, you know. You just can't go. You just can't go fast, super fast on the hills. But I enjoy it there. I enjoy it there. The wife likes it there. The kids like it there. Her family's there, and you know, we're just, just trying to build an empire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it. So when you when you went pro in like, so let's go. What this was two thousand four. Yep. That you went. That's a pretty wild year to go pro with like every the whole landscape. Like yep. Michael Lessey, believe the hype. Stewie had just gone pro like a couple years yep. before that. And it was just like that was a gnarly time in moto. Like, yep. do you do you remember like obviously oh, yeah, like that that just that transition of like the amateur kid to then 
going pro with like all those expectations and yep. all like just talking about Julian. It's like you were the exact opposite to him, <laughs> you know? Yes. I was the exact opposite, which I think going pro, I had so much hype around me going pro. But then, you you know, I was 178 pounds on a multiple five two stroke. You yeah, know, it's too big. And, and they gave the four stroke to Brock Hepler, who was a hundred. Why'd they do that? Forty five pounds, five eight five seven. Why'd they I, do that? No idea. Absolutely no idea. Um, going against James, one hundred and thirty two pounds, soaking wet back then on a fast bike. You know, two stroke, but his was fast. He could do the triples from the inside. I couldn't even do them from the outside. <laughs> I mean, I was doing everything I could to make the triples from the outside. And I think at the first round at Minneapolis, they had to shorten the triples for me because I couldn't make them. I literally could not make them to save my life. And he was doing it from the inside. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if it's the 40 something pounds that I have on you. Um, cause that's a lot of horsepower on a two stroke. Yeah. Or, you know, I might not have been going the fastest because I was nervous my first race, but dude, it's a freaking triple. You hit it wide open and you should, you should make be it. able to make it. Yeah. I was not making it. That's crazy, not making it. dude. So yeah, why they gave him the four stroke. No clue. You know, they gave me the they gave me the four stroke for the last race at the East West shootout and I almost beat James in the heat race with it. Um I got tired though because I was going faster than I had been because that's my first time riding a four stroke. Yeah, true. Literally they gave me the four stroke the week of and that's all I had. So I was not ready for that kind of power. Um was it a huge difference? Huge. I mean, dude, the triples, the jumps, I, my timing was so bad cuz it was yeah, so it, fast. Yeah, yeah. Um my starts weren't great because I didn't know how to start the damn thing. Um and I was all, I was a big kid. Yeah. You know, there wasn't many people bigger than me lined up. Um but no. When did you start getting big? I don't even know. Uh cuz I I mean one year I went from 5 2 to five nine in one year. That's a lot of growth. Like one year. like one and a half one to one and a half years. I went from five two to five nine and yeah. or five eight and a half, five nine in two thousand and twelve. No, sorry, two thousand twelve. Listen to me. Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah. 2002. yeah. And my last race on an eighty five was at World Mini at one hundred and thirty eight pounds five eight. <laughs> That's so insane. Um, so I was five eight and a half, one hundred and thirty two pounds. I or. 32 or 35 somewhere around that ballpark yeah my last race and i won 12 for 12 that race against mike and 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 them but um then i went to big bikes and that was on two strokes never rode a 250 never rode a 450 or and never rode a two stroke or, or, or 250 two stroke never rode a 250f or anything and then th the next year they, they put me pro yeah so well i made it one full year on a big bike before they put me pro yeah. One year. It was a, a little too early. Yeah. A little too early. Because, so you were basically like 16 on the nose, right? Fifth, I was missed the first round because I was 15. That's right. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I was a little too it's early. It's so young today. Yeah. yeah. But I had nothing else to win. Yeah. You know, like I had already won. I, I had every, I've won everything, you know, as an amateur. There wasn't a single national title that I didn't have except for Ponca. I never went there. So if anyone comes up and says, I remember watching you at Ponca, no, you didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I never was yet. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, all Loretta, you know, the Loretta titles, the Lake Whitney, which was probably the baddest track there was. Yeah, that was Mosier cool. Valley and, you know, Minios, uh, World Mini, Mammoth. I mean, I have them all, yeah. you know. So it's like at that point, do I stay down in the year just to get more experience and more titles? I wanted to stay down for more experience. I really did. It had nothing to do with the titles, but at, and Suzuki, I'm telling you, what Suzuki I feel like had in their head is he's won everything. Like why why stay down? Let's yeah. bring him up. You know yeah. we need another person. So that's kind of where I feel like with me winning everything was almost a uh, one year. Yeah, you are almost like a victim of your yeah. own success, kind of. Yeah. So I wish I would have stayed down one more year. It would have gave me way more time over a year on the big bike, and maybe they could have seen how big I was. <laughs> And let me go pro on two fifty F, um, and or I don't know. I mean, I had the Cowie ride too that year that I could have signed with, and, and I had Yamaha that I could have signed with. So it's like, I mean, the Cowie was one that I wanted to go with, um, but you know, Mel Harris, you know, 
Yeah, he'd been God, Suzuki God a rest long his soul, you know, yeah. his soul because he he passed away recently. Yeah, but he uh, he wanted me, you know, to stay, and I loved Mel um, and Colgrass, and so I stayed with Suzuki out of, out of loyalty. Yeah, um, but their their bikes were nowhere near what the bikes like Cowie were at the time. Yeah, um, unfortunately, but it is what it is. You know, you, it, I I beat the Cowie still. Yeah, but just uh, it might have made a different trajectory with my career at that point. Yeah. But again, there's always those could have, would have, should have. Yeah, yeah. yeah, So yeah. It, 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 it's still cool to look back now as a dude. I was the last factory 125 from Suzuki. Yeah. As, as, yes, I just aged myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it, but again, it, it, it's fun. You know, I, when I went to four shows the next year, I didn't know that that bike was, you know, that bad. You know, and then as you start to learn, it's like, wow. They're like, dude, you did it on that bike. I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? Like, that was the bike I had. And they're like, dude, that thing was horrible. I'm like, well, I don't know. It blew up a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, I went through three motors a day sometimes. But my suspension was was fine. Yeah. It just didn't have, I don't think it had the power. Yeah. So. Yeah. Daytona, I think you got, that was a good one the first year, right? I podiumed. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I remember, I on, remember on that race. Yep. Yeah, I remember you looking massive <laughs> on that bike in that yep. race. Yep. I uh didn't start very good, obviously. I started in the back on the two stroke and I passed a lot of people the first lap. And to this day, like when I see Josh at the track still, I still tell him like, I know exactly where I passed you at Daytona for a first second. Grant? No, no, no. Uh Hansen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because back then he was a he was a cocky little dude. Yeah. Um he still is. And he fucking still rides so He was sick. there yesterday riding. I saw him. I, yeah. I pulled into the test track last week. Yeah. And I saw him and I was just like, motherfucker, you yeah, still yeah. look so good when you ride. And I'm like, dude, you're that old and you 40, will... just turned 40. Yeah, yeah. February sixth, you know, sixteenth. It's the day after mine. Um I'm like, yeah, 40 years old. I didn't want to say his age on on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, dude, you you could qualify so easily and he just makes it look so effortless it's crazy but, dude yeah but i remember passing him for a second and he was oh he's on a four shooting yamaha four stroke he was the one you know that was battling with james and whatnot because of the four stroke and he was fast and i'm like dude i know no i'm beating you you know i'm beating you and it was daytona so it was my you know home race basically basically my home and i'm so used to that stuff you know i ended up i ended up beating him so it was uh james him and i um, but that was my first podium, which was three races into my career. So that was pretty cool. Was it good money back then to sign, to just step straight out of amateur, amateurs? Or did you get paid as an amateur as well back then? Because it changed. Like, you, you don't have to say you, how you much. You guys and your money. Yeah, but it's just in, it's <laughs> interesting to know. Like, because you hear crazy rumors about, yeah. like, what guys like AC got paid and, like, and uh, uh, what's his what. Well, Jet um, Reynolds, not yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of what the other jet was called, <laughs> but like you hear that, yeah. that those guys got paid like crazy money as amps. Was it the same back then, or was it more like contingency? I don't know what they what they were getting, but I'd put mine up against it. Really? So you guys were on good money yeah. back then as an amateur? Yeah. Fuck! Isn't it insane? Like, yeah. think about our sport, right? No fear was great bro <laughs> really back then they, no fear was great really yeah fuck that's cool no oh, actually was great that was so iconic back then dude i fucking love that as, so as far as pain they were great until they weren't yeah like just like a tap <laughs> just on off it was well no the off the off i mean i went i went two years without getting paid really but i was so loyal to them that they kept telling me that they'll make it up, they'll make it up, they'll make it up, and they never did. So I wonder what what happened with that company. Sir Wall did, you know, had some bad stuff happen, and and that, that's all I that's all I know. It's so fucking cool though. Yeah, it's it's a bummer because I was with them for God eleven or twelve years. Was it that long? Um, I was one of the I was there from the start, and I was the last one there from the people who started with them. Wow. Yeah. So I mean. Travis obviously was gone. McGrath was gone. K Dub was gone. Yeah, K Dub. Um, but and it was me, and I was the last one. What year did you stop wearing their gear? Two thousand and end of two thousand and ten. Dude, really? Yep. 
end of 2010. No shit. I did not think it was that long. Mm-hmm. I thought it would have been. No, sorry, like, sorry, sorry. End of 2009. Yeah. It had okay. to have been end of nine because in 10, I wore, I wore Scott in 10. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. So 2009. End of 2009, I went to One Industries. Yes. Yeah. And then, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Nine, I went to One Industries. And then 10, I went to Scott. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So somewhere in 2009. So God, from... From 07, you basically didn't get paid from them. Yeah. That was a lot of money. That's wild. So, yeah, it's... They so were, the they, they, they were won huge. a championship, they weren't even paying you. Basically. No, they did. Oh, they did that. They paid yeah. me my championship. Okay. Yes. They and paid my championship. That. And after that, it was not hardly, it wasn't even, it didn't exist really. They maybe one month, you know, and then one month, you know, would go by, another month would go by, and nothing, 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 nothing. And then they'd like give me a little bit. So, but, and then it got to the point to where I'm like, dude, like, I'm okay, like doing it, but is there gonna be is there yeah. a light in the tunnel? Yeah, and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then there wasn't. So they, do you think they just burned too bright that company, like too big? No, too quick, I think or? it has something to do with his personal issues that he had going on. Uh, okay. And that's such a shame. Yeah, he had some big personal things happen in his life. I know that, and it just didn't work. Yeah. Um, and I get it. I understand. You know, and it's it, not like I was a, an owner to where I lost money so to say but i wasn't paid what i was owed yeah yeah. you know but i was able to you know find a different company yeah just not not as much as them yeah so fuck they were iconic dude. yes they were they were massive i just like the the memory i have of you is like 118 on a rm85 with a neck (laughs) donut and no fear gear yep and just dripping just looking so fucking cool back then you know with the awry helmet yeah 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 yeah, man, it, it's God. I was when I signed with them it was Michael McCassey. Yeah, and they their youth colors only had like two colors, and I'm like, no, 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 I don't want just two colors. I want the cool shit. Yeah. So I wore like MC Hammer pants just to be able to have the cool colors. Yeah, and they were right. so gigantic. Um, but God, that had to have been. What was what 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 year they what year they come out ninety eight, yeah maybe ninety eight around then yeah. I was still in St Cloud Florida when I did it so it was ninety eight is is I think my, you know had to have been around that not, not that time frame ninety eight so, so they were paying you good even back then as a uh, when kid. I was twelve that's crazy yeah. so think about college football players struggle to get paid I guess like yeah. the last few years has changed but like twelve year olds are making like multiple six figures. From yeah, but it was bike. it was like, different. It was different back then. It was different. It wasn't like us getting paid money. They would buy tractors, uh, and they would give us gas money and on a gas card, and and so it wasn't just like cash. Send an invoice in the bank account, kind of thing. <sighs> Not to me. Yeah. To my to a business, yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, but most of the time. For me to get like my the big money, they had to they had to spend it on something. Uh, um, but then it turned out to where they put it to a business, yeah. and then yeah, I, I was making you own the business. Yeah, but, yeah. But then the money was going to the business. Yeah. But you know, I had an adult on the business, so they could pay the president of the company <sighs> and not pay a child. Yeah. So that's that's how that went. That's yeah. crazy, dude. Like, yeah. just think about yeah that as an industry, like, and that's what. Think of like the roll-on effect of that yep. and the generation that you guys had, the money that was flown into the industry, like the way shit got set up yep. to like pay children to be fast <laughs> as fuck on dirt bikes. And then yeah. think about, you know, you guys went on to have these crazy careers. Yep. And like it's a wild industry, man. It's very wild. Very wild that you can get paid so young. But again, it's like you we have a short career. Yeah, It's not like a football player or a basketball player or a baseball player to where – you know, they can play for a, a long time. Like we have a short, short, short window, and and LeBron James isn't breaking his back, <laughs> you know, like or a femur. <laughs> like it's just that's the reality of no, it. No, he stubs a toe. Yeah, you know, and and or blow out an ankle or like have pretty a, much a knee. So know. we're getting paid to risk our lives every day. You know, from a from a very, very, very young age. So I, I get it. I, it makes sense. You're just legally not allowed to pay a child. Yeah. So. 
How how aware of it were you? When I was that young? Yeah. Not very. Okay. I wasn't very aware of it when I was that young. As I got older, um, so when I was like 14, when I signed my pro deal, yeah, um, I was pretty aware of it then. So you knew the number, like you knew how much yeah. money you were getting paid yeah. by. Fuck, at, that's at that, crazy. At that time, from Suzuki, from No Fear, from Arai, from Alpine Stars, um, from Oakley, I, I knew all of it. Um, still to this day, I know the numbers in my head exactly what they were. That is um, mental. Yeah. Like cool so, as fuck. So I remember the 04, 5, and 6, I know every single one of the numbers that I got paid from every one of my sponsors. That's about as far as the memory goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's because those are the years that, you know, it was my first years that I really truly knew like, hey, I'm going pro. Like, I signed a pro deal. Like, I got yeah. these contracts. I'm pumped. You know, it's like people dream of this. I got it. Look at this. You know, and yeah. and I, mean, I didn't show it off. It was just like, yeah, yeah. So at that, I imagine and, that's a very real thing. Yeah, you know, like to just grind your whole yeah. life for like this, because there is the promise that like, hey, if you become the best dirt bike rider in the world, you can get paid millions of dollars. Yeah, and then you can never have to work again. So, but at 14, I had. Suzuki, Cowie, and Yamaha all laid out. I had three to choose from, you know, and and that was that was what made I think the, the most surreal for me was the fact that I had three companies, one in me, you know. And then obviously when I, after my Suzuki deal was up, there was those three again, um, except for not Cowie, it was Honda, Honda, yeah, you know, uh, Yamaha and Suzuki, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's. It's crazy being that young and having that that at your fingertips. Yeah. It was, it was very crazy. Yeah. And I think that that's where, you know, it's like, okay, wow, like, I made it. Yeah. You know? But that should have been the point to where it's like, fuck, I need to work harder now. Yeah. You know, but it, was, uh, it wasn't. It <laughs> was <laughs> Yeah, dude, tough, yeah. tough waters to navigate, though, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah. how many 14-year-olds are going to make the right call? <laughs> Uh, you know what i mean like not very many no dude not very many no so it's life though man like i keep saying you know it, it, it's it's lessons that i've learned that you know looking back now yeah could i do i wish i could go back and change it all 100 percent. but again like yeah but that's then, life like, yeah but then you don't I, know i wouldn't be who i am right now if it wasn't for that might not have met Brittany so, in the way that you did you might not have had the kids that you did like you can't you, if that yep. that's the thought experiment that you do yep. it's like you go back and you change one thing you don't have the kid you have you don't have the dog you have you don't yep. you, fucking you could the cowie that you signed with could have grenaded on an up ramp of a trip like you can't do not fuck with the past yeah, yeah because yeah, the future's yeah. never yeah. guaranteed no no you know? no the cowie could have blown up for all i fucking care yeah yeah but. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah i mean just to be that young and to yeah. like see that much money on a, on offer is just yeah, but back Mental then, it, you don't, at 14, you don't really pay attention to, you know, the commas and the and the zeros and the, you know, the dollar signs. You don't, you're just like, you're so pumped. The reason why I know the amount is because I saw it. Yeah. What I cared about most was I have a three-year contract. Right yes, now, for sure. You know, and, and that's what I cared about. Yeah. I didn't care about I'm the going money. to the NFL, I'm, essentially. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. going. Yeah. You know, and that's what was so exciting for me. Um nerve-wracking obviously but super excited to go but the money was just a bonus for me yeah you know and and i didn't really ever put it together until way later like that was a big dollar sign yeah you know for a 14 year old yeah so but now now definitely if my son ever got a contract worth that at 14 he'd be doing a lot better stuff with it than i did <laughs> yeah yeah how does it how does it work like do you yeah because it's not like not even really like you can go spend that much like you can't you can't go to the bank as a 14 year old yeah but you have a business yeah okay yeah so you just have a business card essentially mm -hmm. yep fuck yeah what a wild life dude like it <laughs> yeah. it is crazy and a lot of things were cash back in the day too yeah you know the credit cards were coming around pretty good um we had i know i had one with my name on it with with my business name on it 
but or my mom's name on it with my, with my business that I was using that I had to use for gas and stuff like that. But yeah, no, it wasn't my name until I got uh, a little bit older. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so you go through the first couple of years with Suzuki yep. and then the Honda yep. deal comes around. And yep. I think that that was like obviously 06 you win the championship, yep. but like that really seemed like you were just the winner that year from like yep. day one basically. Yeah, no, it was that <laughs> that bike was unreal. Really? That bike was unreal. I had one of those bikes actually. Yeah. <laughs> that bike, that 250F was unreal. Um, still to this day, probably one of the best bikes I ever rode. Really? Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I gelled with it. Um, we got it working so good. And it was fast enough for me to do what I needed to do. Um, obviously, you know, still being 17, um, you know, and leading the championship. and But already having the year before where I was leading the championship and was battling with the championships and, and threw it away on my own mm. at Daytona. Um, but by getting taken out, but I threw it away by not crossing the finish line. You know, I already had it in my head of, of, I know what it takes. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't going to lose and the whoops were easy for me and they were big that year. So it made it nice. Yeah. Um, I was in shape, uh, and I was faster than, than, than everyone else was that, that year. So it was me jumping with the bike, me jumping with the team and me knowing that I could win. And yeah. that's, that's, that's all it was. What's so, it like to go from Suzuki to Honda in that? Like, cause you've been on Suzuki's for so long. Nine years. Yeah. Cause it's got to just be like almost a, I don't know, fuck get a new chick or something. You get all excited. You're on your best behavior for a while. <laughs> it, it was more so I would say because I was, you know, 17 when I signed, um, it was nerve wracking for me because I didn't know anyone. Mm. you know i had no idea who anyone was I, the people that showed up that, that had me test the bike I, I don't even remember who they were <laughs> um and there was only two of them or three of them there wasn't very many and i rode andrew short's bike when i tested the bike on an outdoor track that wasn't groomed at all and that's when i signed with them um but for me going to the team for the first time the test track or whatnot it was like who are you? you yeah. Know, like I, you know, it's, it's, and I was a goofy, awkward kid back in the day. So it was, I, I was super, super, super nervous. I rode the bike. And then from that day on, it was, you know, because I, I think I was pretty damn fast on that 250F that there was an easy job to that point. Everyone saw that, you know, I can, I can, yeah, I can going go fast helps. Yeah. 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 And, um, after that, it, it became a family. Yeah, you know, and then it, then things started changing around inside of, of of Honda, and it made it to where it wasn't a family anymore. Yeah, and uh, and it made it to where it became really hard to be there, and didn't didn't give me motivation to go work, you know, super super hard. But again, that's the time frame that I had the wrong people. Yeah, so, okay. And the O nine and ten Honda were probably the worst bikes ever made. It's so. crazy how wrong they got that shit. Oh, it's O eight yeah. maybe the best bike ever. Cowie still using basically a version of that geometry on their bikes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Everyone loved it. 2009, 2010, biggest piece of shit ever. And no one understands that. Even to this day, like, I thought people were like, what? It was that bad? I'm like, you guys have no idea how bad that bike was. We called it the jackhammer. It, it, it was so bad. It would destroy your hands. There was no way. You could have been in the best shape of your life. You weren't gonna make a moto. There was no way you could make a moto with that. What it so what was the characteristic? Just like crazy so rigid. Hammer. Just super rigid. Yeah. Like a two by four. No shit. Literally like a two by four. And there's nothing that we could we could test all day long and it never got better. It was the weirdest thing in the entire world. And I mean, we tried the Honda they they were trying, but I don't think they had the authority from the up above, you know, higher ups to pull the trigger on things that needed to be to be pulled. Mm -hmm. Um and that's where it became really difficult because it's like, do you guys want to win? Do you guys want to not win? Or what are we doing? Um, but then again, like I even talked to Andrew Short about it all the time. You know, he was one of those ones that were like, oh my God, it's so good. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, it's not. He kept his ride at Honda for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he kept his ride for Honda, hands down. But it was one of those times where it's like, dude, if, if we would have had, because it was me on my own, 
you know, me, uh, Ivan and myself are always the ones that are like, dude, no, it sucks. Please, like, let's change it. No, 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 no. And then you have Andrew. Oh, it's so good. They're going to lean towards the positivity hands down, you know, and, and had it been Andrew over here with us, I think that could have made the difference to where we could have had the big change that we needed. Yeah. Um, but, and he knows that now. I talk to him about it all the time. You know, he's like, ah. Will he admit that it was bad now? <laughs> oh, yeah. He just was being a, he was being a company man. He was, he, granted, as, I mean, I get it. Yeah. You know, and he had a ride. He, he wasn't doing bad. Yeah. You know, but he wasn't doing what he could have done had he had a better bike. Yeah. You know, and I was just, back then, I was just miserable. Yeah. And I was just miserable riding that bike. I was miserable being around people who really didn't want me to be there. Um, because of the people that I had my, had around me to where it was leading me down that direction. So it was just a big whirlwind. But no, who I had around me, my attitude had nothing to do with how bad that bike was. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Reg- all my flaws aside, that <laughs> yeah, bike was a turd. All my flaws, yeah. that bike was horrendous. So, and no, Andrew, hands down, yes. If he had maybe joined on to Ivan and I, we may have made a dent. But even at that point, I don't know if we could have. Like yeah. It was it was that bad. Yeah. So did you ever ride a stock one? For 09, I did. For 09, for a while before they ever got parts, we rode a stock one. And was the stock one as bad? Yeah. Same shit. Yeah. 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 Being factory is not always better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't make it any better. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know. It, I rode the stock one for a little bit on Supercross track, but I had Supercross suspension, so yeah. You know, it's hard to tell, but. All in all, no, I just never gelled with it. Yeah. It was so, so small and it twitched everywhere on me. It front end would tuck everywhere on me. Yeah. Um, and if to get it to not tuck, we had to make it so rigid. Yeah. It's so like that if I, it was miserable to ride. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not how I ride. I'm a front end rider. Yeah. So if my front end isn't good, I'm, I, I have a hard time. Yeah. And that bike was that time for me. Yeah. So it was good. You know, it was, it's a good two years. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever ride the 2012? No. No. So, I was on Yamaha. So Townley yep. will tell you that that bike's the best bike ever. I've heard that. And he he says now, though, like he, he actually thinks that the new 250 Yamaha, the new generation is the best chassis he's ever ridden in his life. Yeah. But up until then, up until we had that conversation, the bike he said is the best bike ever was his own 2012 yeah. he was a privateer like he was just about to do the 2-2 yeah. thing and he like built up his own bike with his own suspension dude in new zealand and he he ended up breaking his hip and yeah. that's why he couldn't do the um the 2-2 thing bro he was fucking flying yeah like he beat everyone in australia that it was like conondale which is like our unadilla basically a minute and a half just easy on that bike that fucker's fast outdoors. How do you go from having the best bike, the worst bike, the best bike? It's crazy the swing. Be- because they probably learned what not to do from the yep. worst bike. Yep. They had to have learned what not to do. They had to learn that everyone wanted off of the thing. Yeah. We're not winning. No one wants to ride it. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. You know, and and you know, now you look at them and it's like, okay, they have a president behind them. And that, you know, the higher up that just wants to win. No matter what it takes, they're going to win. And regardless of, I know Jet's obviously fast. We get that point. But, you know, you put someone like, um, I don't know, you put like uh, Anderson or you put someone else on that Honda, he's going to be really, really, really good because mm-hmm. they're going to be willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that he's on top. Yeah. You know, it's they're that type of team right now. Yeah. Um, which is, I think, what, what it takes. What it takes was what we needed. Yeah. And we didn't have. Yeah. You know, when, when um, Chuck Miller left is when the team for us kind of went downhill. Yeah. At Honda. Yeah. Um, he was he was awesome. But when he left, it kind of was uh, hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's that movie? Um, fuck, it's the, the football movie, like the college kids. Varsity Blues? <sighs> no. no. <laughs> Where the, he says attitude reflects leadership. Uh-uh. Uh, anyway, it's just in one of those, that left side, strong side. You remember that movie? God damn uh, it. Oh. um, You know the one I'm talking about, right? 
Yeah. Where, oh, it's where the white kids and the black kids. And yeah, like yeah, they, yeah, You yeah. know that movie? Yeah, why I know I, that movie. Why can't, it's a, such a great movie and I'm fully spacing on it. Ah. Oh. God damn it. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Thank you. That was going to piss me off. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, there's a there's a bit in that movie where he, he says attitude reflects leadership. Yep. Fuck, as soon as I heard that, I was like, God damn, he's so right. But it's yep. so true, man. Like you, leadership is the thing that, yeah, it it all starts at the top when it yep. comes to those kind of environments. If you, you know? don't have a good leader and in, in your group, you know, you can be on the bottom and yet be as good of a leader as you want in your small area. But if there's someone way above you that obviously controls it, if they're not a good leader, yeah. It does has no it does nothing how good you are. It yeah, it kind of like you. ties your hands. Yeah. You yeah. You're, you can be a good leader, but if you're getting told no no, 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 no. And does then in, does you no good to be yeah. anything? Yeah. You know, you, you need to find a different path. And, yeah. and that's that's kind of what I did. Yeah. Um, did you ever, were you ever ta- uh, teammates with BT? Yeah. At that, was it around that time? So it was Townley. Yeah. But he got hurt. Yeah. Um, myself, Ivan. And Shorty. Short, Biolic. That's right. Um, I think that was it. Yeah. I think that was there was there was a group of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a group of us, but but BT got hurt that year. Yeah. And then that was it. Never came back. I raced him, I think two rounds, on outdoors. I raced him at Glen Helen, um, and I beat him, and I was so pumped. Yeah. I was so pumped that I beat him. I beat him in IT, and was that that was would have been on a four fifty? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah. Um, I beat him. I beat. I was the top dog on the team, but just the fact that I beat Ben, you know, because he was so dominant in outdoors regardless. Yeah. I was just pumped to beat him. Yeah. You know, and, and. Uh, Did you get to hang out with him? Much? Yeah. I like BT. He's we hung such out a cool guy. Time, yeah. You know, but so like for me to beat yeah. him, it was one of those like, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you're quite a bit older than me. Um, you're way faster than me outdoors but I got you. Yeah. You know, like it was like a proud moment for me just being around him for so many years. And I rode with him, you know, um, in 07 quite a bit on the outdoors and when he was still pro circuit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a cool, that was, that was, it would have been sick. Cause that was the only time in my head that I know that I beat him. Cause after that, I, I that was, he was pretty much gone. Yeah. So yeah. And after 07, when he had the season that he did with Ryan, it's just yep. like, the guy was pretty much untouchable, you know. Yep, and then and then I beat him, so I was pumped. <laughs> Where Ryan is he a year younger than you? Six Billy? months. Okay. Yep. Did you have to race him a lot through Am career? My whole amateur it, career. So it was you yeah. guys? Yeah, my whole amateur career. So it's just you, RV, and Alessi, basically. Me, RV, Alessi, Chisholm, um, Gurky. Yeah. Um, Stewart was a little bit older. Yeah. Jesse Nelson. Or sorry, Jimmy Nelson. Um, God, there's a lot of names that are gone now. Yeah. Um, yeah. How was was Nico younger than you guys? Nico was a couple years younger than me. Yeah. Yeah, but he rode at with me in Georgia a lot, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, but yeah, he was I think one or two years younger than me. Did you ever think he'd end up the way that he did? No. Fuck, no, it, it's it's bad, eh? Poor guy. Yeah. It. I don't know, man. It. And, and Stroop. Yeah. You know, it, you look at them and you're like, I look, <laughs> makes my, my mistakes and, and the lessons that I've learned nothing. Yeah. Um, it, the addiction for me is, is, is hard because yeah. it's like, you know, what it's going to do to you, you know, and, and I know it's, it's tough, but I, and I have no idea what people go through because I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that addictive, you know, personality. Yeah. But, you know, because I've had freaking 35 surgeries in my life and, have, yeah, you just were able to get off it. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't bother me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like being on it. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, it so, is just a different thing, dude. Yeah. Like some people just love the feeling of being fucked up. I don't, I don't get it. You yeah. know, and, and, and like the people who who take the time to smoke the weed, it's like, that's too much freaking work, man. <laughs> that's, that's too much work. Yeah, but what did you say when you walked in here? Like someone's really doing the God. weed. I'm like, well, you're not a stoner. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and the funny thing is, is, you know, when I hit my head, I guess I told the doctor that I was smoking the bong <laughs> earlier and I'm 
and Hanson was happened to be there, I guess. And Hanson's like, he doesn't smoke. <laughs> Cause I had never, I had never smoked before, you know? And, and it, it was one of those things. I'm not saying I do a lot now, but I, I tried it cause of my brain injury. Yeah, to try well, to, it's actually very yeah. good. For so I tried it, but yeah. me coming off the high was no, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And I don't enjoy it. It's not fun for me. It takes too much work and, and I get nothing out of it. Yeah. And I go to sleep. Yeah. So I might as well just go to sleep. Yeah. Um, CBD all day long. Um, but, but no, Nico and, and Stroop, no, that one caught me off guard because I've yeah. known them obviously my whole life. Yeah. And those ones, those ones, those ones were, those ones were rough, especially Trevor Doney who passed away a couple of years ago as well. He was, he was amateur and, and, um, he got mixed up into, you know, really, really, really bad, um, addiction yeah. and OD'd a few years ago and passed away. No um, shit. And he was friends with. Um, you know, Nico and he was friends with with yeah. Stroop, and so it's, it's maybe that just that era, you yeah. Know? But it, it's tough, you know, just like just like Josh Lichtel, yeah. You know, and and you know, you can say what you want, you know, and and I and I raced Josh, but that's another one that was yeah. an amateur, yeah. You know, so him, I talked to him on the line, the the race that he passed away. No way. Yeah, I hadn't seen him in years. And he showed up on the line. I'm like, dude, what up, Josh? It's been forever. You know, because we used to hang out all the time at MTF and GPF. And I hadn't seen him. Saw him on the line. And I was I was pumped to see him around, you know. And and then that was the last time I talked to him. No way. So and I I don't know. I know he had a heat stroke. I know that, and it's a bummer. You know, it, it sucks. But you know, he was in. A, you know, he was an addict as well. So he. Oh, I didn't. I never yeah. knew he was having yeah. problems like that. I don't that. know if he still was or not, but I know he was. So yeah, his okay. system was still probably fucked up by the time he was racing. Yeah. Um. But it's just things like that. That man, it's like shit wreaks havoc on your body. Yeah. You know, and and Billy, his brother, you know, I did a camp with him for a Josh Lichtel, you know, memorial camp, whatever, and and you know, I've I've known Billy and his family forever, uh, Lichtel. So yeah. it, you know, so that was cool to be around them, but. Um, hands down talking to Josh and seeing him was he looked he looked good before he died you yeah. know what I mean he looked sober he looked clean yeah it's a bummer that he died yeah you know then you have Nico who prison again well I I heard he did fentanyl not too long ago and OD'd on fentanyl yeah I, I actually someone told me on the weekend yeah. not not to speak to our school but yeah someone said on the weekend it's like not not great and yeah. I was like fuck he got out and he was good again. Now yeah. back in, and then you know I talked to Shooter once in a while, but it's just crazy that the addiction in, in my era is that stuff. Where the old, <laughs> yeah. the old era was you know white and green, yeah. and everyone's still fine. Yeah, you know it, it's mind blowing. Yeah, you know it, it's you had your white side and you had your green side, and those people are still hundred percent fine today. Yeah. So, but you get into the opioids and and dude, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, that stuff is not cool. No. And it's like, but it, it is fucking, it is hard to, some people just have that personality, you know, like that you just can't give them shit. You just can't give them anything. No. They just, they're fine being in that druggy, zoned out, kind of it, like and, fucked and up. And they like, they're cool with being in that place. And it's just like, <clears throat> they're the guys. I'm sitting at the Julian. <laughs> it, it's it's mind blowing to me. Um, um, that you can be a professional athlete and get addicted to something like that, and yeah, because you're just so used to your body being like this high performance thing. Yeah, I get, I get. Alcohol is another. I get that's an addiction as well, but people can get addicted to it. I understand that. You know, I had alcoholics in my family. Bad. Um, I still. If you told me right now that I could not have another drink for the day for the rest of my life wouldn't bother me yeah you know i don't i don't need i only did it back in the day because <laughs> as a, it was fun to be around you know and, and have fun but you know i don't i don't have that yeah personality to where where yeah. i need it where you look at these guys and you're like dude you were at the top of your game yeah you know like you were at the top of your game and you get hurt and you let a pill ruin your entire life yeah you know and it's like you couldn't get a grasp on the fact that you needed to stop and get through this you know whatever yeah. it takes to get through the to get sober again yeah even for a month you couldn't do it you could turn your life around real fast yeah but not my thing not my deal yeah no yeah. i mean fuck i don't get it like i i definitely get i get the addiction 
I feel like I get the addiction side of it because I, we're, we're all like addicted to something in a sense. You know what I mean? But it's like, how destructive is it? But yep. Like, I think addiction is when it's like, this is destructive. This is like, has negative consequences on your life. But it's like, for me, like I'm addicted to riding. Like if I don't ride, I fucking don't like it. Dirt bikes? <laughs> yeah. I just love, yeah. I love to ride. Yep. I want to pack up my bike once a week and just go and ride. With yeah, my but that's friend. once a week. That's not addiction. Yeah, but I mean. That, but that's that. I, but I guess I can say like I can, like the, the compulsion. That's your high. Like to be compelled to do something. Yeah. And if I yeah. don't get to do it, then I'm like not cool, <laughs> you know? And it's like yeah, I have yeah, the yeah. same thing with like jujitsu. Yeah, if yeah. I don't like go and like have that feeling and if I yeah. don't get to be, have that like physical outlet. And it's like, but there's other times in my life where it's like, I've been way too addicted to smoking weed and it's like, <laughs> but it's like the, what you're, tr you got to recognize like what you're trying to do. And it's yeah. like, it's all an escape yep. from something. And it's like the writing is an escape. Like the, the reason why I get like antsy and fucking like, uh, it's because like, I've got so much shit going on that I yeah, just, yeah. I need it gone for a little bit you need it gone. and then I'll come back to it. And it's like the same as jujitsu. Like there's nothing clears your mind better than just going and fucking going ham against a dude that's like really good at jiu-jitsu <laughs> and it's like that's a it's a yep. really great feeling you just empty the tank you're yep. not you're so in the moment this motherfucker's coming at you with everything that he's got yeah and like you need to be there right now doing the thing or you're gonna get smashed <laughs> you know so it's yep. like and then you come back to the world and it's like the 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 angst that you felt it's just not there in the same way like you've had a reset you've had like yeah but you know and then it's like if you're smoking too much weed or if you're drinking every night it's like you want a feeling you want to change your yep. state like reality at large isn't cool with you yeah in that moment yep. so you want to change the way that you are experiencing the world yeah you know so it's like i understand addiction but dude, to do something that will fucking kill you <laughs> is that, that to me, I've really struggled with. No, you know? I, I, I get it, like, dude. It, it just takes it to such a crazy level where it's like, this is not okay. Yeah. My dad was an alcoholic, so I get it. You know, my aunt was an alcoholic, so I get it. You know, it, it's, it, it, it kills families, you know, it, it rips them apart. So it's crazy shit, man. It, it's, not the life that I ever could imagine me having. That's for damn sure. Yeah. That's for damn sure. But you're right. It was a generational thing. Like we yep. just don't see guys having that problem now. No. Nope. Guys was, are still breaking shit. Yep. Uh, it was, it was that era. Yeah. You know, which is the era just, just behind technically in the same time yeah, frame, yeah. but just like a couple years after me, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's that time. Yeah. That, that created it all that, yeah. More people went downhill in that little, you know, that age group than I, I think a lot of people did. I wonder, eh? Like, I really wonder what the deal was. Like, I remember going to a party once in Temecula. It wasn't even a party. It was just like a fucking bunch of pro riders doing drugs in a house in fucking Temecula somewhere. And, yeah, it was just like that group. Yeah. That group. And I'm just, it was like there was just something in the air. Like, maybe they got all this money and they finally got freedom away from MTF, away from their families yeah. and just like doing their own program. That's the thing that was on offer. That's what everyone was doing. And yeah, like you said, back in the day, like, you know, doing Coke yeah. and doing like smoke, those guys smoking weed and shit. It's like, that's what, just what everyone was doing then. It's like the seasons and you just get so fucking unlucky yeah. that you're that guy in that time. <laughs> Pretty doing, much. That's kind of all it yeah. is, you know? Because that era before us, like I said, they're still all around and doing great. Yeah. And, and then the era after. And the, well, now the era after us, yeah, they're fantastic too. No one even goes to after parties anymore. <laughs> Do those exist? Like, Not really. Yeah, no. I think the last after party I went to was when I won uh, Monster Cup. I went to the Monster after party. That would have been sick. I went to it for a couple was hours. Was 14 or? 14. Yeah. Um, went to it for couple hours and that was it i was gone i went home or sorry i went back to the hotel martin slept in the hallway <laughs> <laughs> but he slept in the hallway for a minute and then found the door yeah um but other than that yeah no it was 
that's it, man. I don't, I don't, I don't do that shit no more. Dude, I think the last after party I went to was Geneva. I was with Roger Larson. Okay. And I can't remember what year it was. It was like 16. It was the year AC got hurt. I can't remember what year it was. But, dude, I was fucking blackout, dude. Like, so bad. I remember going. So, we went all night. Yeah. And uh, and the flight was super early. And I was, I so, dude, I I never knew. I was born with one kidney. I know you've only got one kidney yep. from, like, getting fucked up. I never had one to begin with. So I only had one and I used to get the craziest hangovers. But this night was the worst hangover I ever had of all time. Hands out, bar none. I walked into the airport of Geneva and they got like dudes with AK-47. Yeah. I honestly was just going to assault a dude, like assault <laughs> a fucking guard just so I could get shot yeah. and get morphine. Like that's how fucking bad my hey, hangover was. Hey, your liver processes it first, so it's okay. Dude, I would always just blame, like, once I found out that I only had one kidney, I was like, I'm blaming that shit now. I'm going to blame the kidney. <laughs> poor kidney, poor kidney. You know, when I lost mine, I, you know, I, it was trying to get back to riding and whatnot, but yet, at that point, I don't know how old I was. It was 2010 when I lost it. It's a long time ago. Did you have any negative consequences from it, yeah. do you reckon? Yeah. The kidney? Yeah. What did If I take 100 milligrams of caffeine, I process 50 of it. Uh. You know, or, or or like an Advil or a Tylenol, I process half of that. Huh. Um, the other thing is, is I lost, um, I lost my testosterone along with it for some odd reason because I, I couldn't, my body couldn't process it. I guess. Really? Yeah. For some odd reason, it, my testosterone dropped tremendously from after that. Huh. Um, I figured out how naturally to get it back. You know, it took a long time to figure that out. Um, but just what you ate and stuff like that to get your body back moving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it hurt me for a few years to figure out my body after that incident. Yeah. Um, but when I figured it out, then it was easy. Yeah. Um, but now with your adrenal glands and stuff like that, yeah, you override them. It gets rough. Yeah. It gets rough. Yeah. But all in all, it, most of the time I know what's going on. Yeah. So I just change it. How do you go with like hydration and stuff? Do you reckon it did it affect your hydration yes. much? Massive, massive, yeah. massive. That's the biggest thing I struggle yeah. with. It, for me, it was more so like I had to get IVs during, yeah, the, yeah. during the week yeah. to stay hydrated because I couldn't put in uh, enough because I would pee it literally Dude, right out. I'm the same, man. Um, That's crazy. It was yeah. miserable. Yeah. You know, if I drank, if I drank a gallon of water, I was peeing out half. Yeah. And so my body's only processing half a gallon. Yeah. So I, I can't physically take in two and three gallons of water. My stomach wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. You know. So I had to I had to get IVs in order to get um, to stay hydrated enough to continue what I was doing during the week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And make it through the weekend. Get home and get back to it. Yeah. Um, it's it it sucked, but it, once I figured out that that's what I needed. Yeah. Then my then. It, then it became easy. It became known. It's what I had to do. It was just, it was routine. It was habit. Yeah. Um, and it's what I had to do. Did you, did you get headaches and shit from it? No. Okay. No, no. I, but dude, like when I hit my head, I, sorry, when I lost my kidney, I hit my head. Don't remember the day. Yeah. Very well. Um, broke my thumb, broke my ribs, punctured a lung, broke my back. Um, How, what, what, what was the crash? Like what? Uh, hit false neutral at the face of a uh, jump at Bud's Creek. Fuck. Um, the other kid that one of the kids that I trained, uh, Cameron, and he was racing the JS seven race, and I think he was in fourth or fifth and hit false neutral off one of the jumps, and he's like, "Dude, like, he's like, well, how did I hit false neutral?" And I'm like, it, "It's a freak accident, man. Yeah. It's nothing you did wrong. It's nothing your body. It's literally just a freak just accident, a machine. man." And yeah. and you know, so Cameron's laid up. He just got out of the hospital. Not to, you know, I think yesterday or today he got out of the hospital. Um, but you know, he messed himself up pretty good from hitting false neutral. And I'm like, I've been there. I feel you, you yeah. know, but I pick yourself up and, and let's get going. Cause that was a freak accident. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 it fucked me up pretty good for a couple of years. Like I said, yeah. just from all, all of, the, all of it, I had to heal at the same time. Then it took about five months in order to ride again. Cause they wouldn't let me ride cause of my kidney. 
Um, and then to figure out the testosterone issue and what I could eat and how much I was processing. Yeah, it was gnarly. So you knew what your baseline testosterone was? Yep. What what did it float around at? Uh, what was it? 800? Okay. Yeah. So what's normal? There's, I don't know. There's Everyone's different. Yeah, yeah. But I think 800 is like high to like... It's I was like young. The, uh, yeah, it's like yeah. the above... Well, not above, but that's like on the higher end. What did it go down to? 120. Ah, you would have felt like shit. <laughs> I had nothing in me. It went down to 120. And it's only, it's right now because I don't train that much and, and I'm not helping myself by any means. But it, I, I think right now I'm at like 240. Yeah, okay. You know, so I'm I'm just still floating in that where I where I was. Yeah. Um, But no, I lost all of it. Um, How? I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, since I retired, like I have tried the, you know, the TRT and stuff like oh, that. Oh, did you? And I fucking hated it. Really? I absolutely hated it. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk 50 steps without my legs blowing up. I felt like and really? my legs were so pumped up. My body was pumped up. I was over it. I really? did it. I did it for a month and a half and said no more. No shit. No more. Don't want it. Get rid of it. Wow. And, and I literally am like, I'm not going to be that lazy fool at this age. I'll figure out a way again to get my testosterone back up again. Yeah. But yeah, being 35 years old and retired for seven years, like uh, I can do that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. so I, I, I tried it. Why not? You know, it's, it's low. I wanted to see what it would do. Not anything good for me. No shit. Not anything good do for me. Do you know what, how much you were doing? Nope. Roughly? Nope. Just whatever they said. I Like one CC, yeah. one, one and a half CCs, like nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it destroyed me. No way. It destroyed me. Oh. I see like all my friends that don't race and they're and they're like not in this industry. And they're like, dude, I we do it and we fucking love it. Yeah, and everyone like, says I want it. that. Yeah. I didn't get it. <laughs> so I was I was pretty upset, not gonna lie, because I wanted that feeling that they had, like, dude, I feel alive. Yeah. And I'm like, no, well, I didn't get it. So yeah, I'm done with it. Like I will never touch that stuff again. Ever. No shit. Uh-uh. Huh. Ever, ever, ever. I don't care. The best doctor in the world can call me right now and say, I'll give you the arm. I will not touch it. What about like HGH and stuff? Not same, my deal. Same deal, yeah. I don't know. Not my deal. I don't, I don't, I've never done that stuff. It's just not my deal. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not what I got busted for with, with Cowie, just so uh, you all know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. I forgot about that. No, I didn't. Fucking, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been waiting for that question, by yeah, the way. Yeah, dude, I completely forgot um, about that. But no, that stuff I don't mess with just because there's no reason for me to. Yeah. Um, I'm not that old yet. Yeah, I feel like maybe when I get to sixty, dude, I got friends that that do it. So jujitsu, yeah, yeah, all fucking steroids. Oh, I can imagine. Like every single person that <laughs> trains does yeah. fucking steroids, and it's so annoying because like there's there's some dudes they'll come they're just like literally you like train with them for a couple of years, yeah. and you just that you handle them, and then the next you just come in you you're not there for a week, and you come back and fucking homeboys on the source and it is just like training with a <laughs> fucking bear and you're like bro what did you do yeah what'd you do so that shit gets old but i've got other friends that they're yeah. not like pro moto guys but they're just guys i ride with h a h little bit of test yeah. fucking love it yeah absolutely yeah. love it and i'm like oh i can't really do that shit because we fly so much like, so we're in here, yeah, we're in Dubai, wouldn't, wouldn't Australia. So it's like, I can't, I'm not in one place really long enough to yeah, like. It'd be hard actually, to travel with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah Especially wouldn't. Dubai. <laughs> can't, cannot go to Dubai. No, nope, can't go shit. to Dubai. Can't Australia, do it. Australia, cannot go there. No. Nope. But uh, oh, yeah, I'm curious. There's Damn. a lot of Aussies that's been caught for it, though, by the way. So you can get it over there. Oh, yeah, you can get it there. <laughs> but just to like get it here to get yeah, it, like yeah. to just, it just seems like it's too much. Yeah. But I got adrenal fatigue pretty bad yep. like i was trained doing jujitsu like the first two years of like really sending mm. it with training buried myself like fully it's rough. dude and it gave me a whole new appreciation for when guys like i didn't get diagnosed with like epstein Barr or whatever mm. but like i for sure had some level of like chronic fatigue just like zero recovery yeah. had no energy went from like super high performing training yeah. literally every single day yeah. most days twice a day to just not training at all i just couldn't fucking yeah. do it body just went nah yeah when i had epstein and 15 is is uh it was dirty it yeah. wasn't fun that's when the cowie like oh um it was it was uh that was the worst feeling riding wise and my motor skills were shot yeah um my vision was yeah, you shot. just can't concentrate no. eh? 
I thought the jump was literally in front of me, but it <laughs> wasn't. Or I would think it was far away, but it was right in front of me. I, I It was miserable to ride with. And so anyone who has it and claims that it doesn't exist or claims that it doesn't exist, I feel sorry for the ones that have it. And you're high as a fucking kite if you don't think it exists. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. What were you doing blood work and shit like back in the day when you were when you were racing like yeah. was that a thing that yeah yeah people did yeah okay i mean after my kidney yeah i had to uh, yep. yeah yeah before yep. that no i mean i had it done a few times um before that just for some sort of physical i had to do and we did we did a blood test uh because i don't even remember why i did it maybe like a um, contract or something I, no something to do with we wanted to see where all my levels were. I know yeah, that okay. um, to make sure if, if I needed to change anything in my diet or change anything, what my supplements, stuff like that. So I know I did it one time and I knew what my levels were. Yeah. Um, but that's why when I got my blood test after the kidney, I knew where it was. Yeah. Um, but after my blood test with my kidney, I had to keep doing it continuously just to make sure my creatinine and my, you know, yeah. my BUN level was yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and then to figure out if my testosterone was going up and, and you know, because obviously, you know, your HGH level gets affected too by it. Yeah. Um, but my testosterone did and my HGH didn't. Yeah. Um, so I had one but not the other. Yeah. And but as you get older, it all diminishes anyway. Yeah. And, but then I started converting my testosterone and estrogen. And that was the motherfucker. Oh, dude. And you're supposed to do that at 40. I was doing it at like 25. So that was it. That was that was rough to figure out that one too that was rough um and what'd you have to do with that literally there was there was vitamins that i was taking um that supposedly was supposed to like what what, what is that what is that one um it's a weird name i don't even know how to say it. Ash, ashwanda no, I don't know. What it's a weird name. I don't know how to say it. It's like a testosterone booster, but yet there's some things like in mushrooms that you can like you know, cordyceps stuff like that you can yeah, take to help yeah, block yeah, yeah, yeah. block the estrogen, supposedly. Yeah. So I was taking stuff like that because it was natural and I could take it. Yeah. Um most mushrooms just aren't on a list at all. Uh -uh. Like so even uh like fucking tight like Moto GP, F1, mm -hmm. like all those guys that like they can actually take mushrooms it's yeah. not, not on there still cybin is on the list yeah yeah but, yeah you know it, it, that's that's one of the ones that saved me from my brain um yeah right yeah okay so, yeah still cybin was a massive um go-to for me uh saving me from my dark my dark yeah era with yeah. my brain injury yeah. so i believe in mushrooms as far as that stuff goes yeah you know not not like oh my god i'm gonna get high off mushrooms yeah it was all microdosed all yeah. You know, all good, all, you know, done the right way. I wasn't doing anything stupid. Yeah, not um, out. you didn't no. go out into a field. And no, <laughs> with no, a plastic no, no, bag. no. When I took it, I didn't even know I took it. And then after about a month, it was like, wow, like I'm back. You That's know, amazing. It took a long time for it to kick in. But when it kicked in, it kicked in. Yeah. And, and I had to be on it for almost two years straight. Huh. If I stopped it, then I noticed it. Dude, I didn't even think yeah. about, um, I've heard of that, yeah. like pe people that have had brain injuries yeah. with psilocybin. So do you know, have you ever had a tiny Seagrave? She's a downhill chick. She's like Red Bull downhill. She's like one of the best female downhill. Yeah. She had a crazy bad concussion mm -hmm. and just, she's like the most happy, go lucky, like yeah. coolest, nicest chick in the world, full blown suicidal depression for a year. Same here. From a head injury, man. Yeah. And I did not even think we were talking. She did the podcast and just like right before yep. Christmas. But yeah, didn't even think about asking about mushrooms because yeah, it's huge. Lion's mane was a big one too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a really sh like powerful nootropic. Yeah. 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 Lion's mane, psilocybin, um, and CBD were literally like my go-to's every day, as much as I could. Um, except for obviously the psilocybin was once a day, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the CBD was 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 all day. And how were you taking that? What, like the CBD tincture? How like Just, a cream or something? No, under the tongue. Oh yeah, 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 yeah tincture yeah, yeah, under yeah, the tongue. Yeah. Um. Uh, it, morning, noon, and night, man. It was. I put it in my ears. I put it in my eyeballs. I put it up my nose. I did everything I could to get to my brain. Really, everything I could. Fuck. I didn't. I did. I did not care. Yeah. You know, and I was 
on a mission not to be suicidal anymore. I was on a mission not to be depressed anymore. I was on a mission to not have those angry spells and to have the spells to where I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want that anymore. Oh, you know? man. And it, I was willing to do whatever it took. And luckily, the things that I found were natural. You know what I mean? And 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 it brought me back pretty fast. So <clears throat> when was, like, what was the deal with that crash in particular? Like, what happened on the, to get that injury? Um, it was, a was, rhythm, that, was that when you signed for Yamaha? Yamaha. Yeah. It was a rhythm section out of a corner where you jump onto a tabletop and jump across and then jump off. So it was a single table, table, single table, single. So I went on, off, off table over single. And I had three laps to go for the day. I was done in three laps. I was doing my moto. I had three laps to go. I remember getting three laps. Remember? And and I just started doing this one rhythm section. On the other side, I was so pumped about. I was so pumped that I was <laughs> doing it. And came around, got three laps to go. And when I came to the section where it was on off, I went on to the first one, went off, and that's all I remember. And um I don't remember anything past that point for a few months. Um I know my bike shut off on me uh, when I went to go off. It completely shut off. Um, and as I was going off, obviously, the tabletop was right there. So for when I went back later and I went and looked at, you know, we're, we went out there for photo shoot. I went and walked, the, you know, the jump. You can actually still see my imprint in the face. It's like, okay, that's my helmet. So obviously, as I went off, I didn't have time to jump. But 100%, I know I tucked because I only hit yeah. the side of my head. Yeah. I hit the side of the head. Um, so I tucked. Uh, so I know I did that at least because um, I destroyed this shoulder, destroyed this elbow. Oh, yeah, fuck. Um, broke my knee brace completely in half, um, blew my knee apart, and did my head. Um, and it was one of the hardest impacts Bell had seen in that side of the helmet. And so I hit hard, yeah, hard enough to knock me out for close to 10 minutes or just over 10 minutes, whatever it was. Um, but it's all due to my bike shutting off. Fuck. Yeah. Unfortunate. But again, it's racing. I signed up yeah, for it, yeah. you know, or yeah. practice, whatever it is. But I signed up knowing that, hey, it could happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. it wasn't the mechanic's fault. It wasn't anyone's fault. It was literally a freak accident and, and just unfortunate. So, but that was the whole extent of of it but then and then shit got wild yeah you know i was speaking seven languages supposedly but i didn't speak seven languages without telling everyone i had shit in my house that can kill everyone in the world but i didn't i was talking to people that didn't exist um i guess i was having conversation with with people in my house um this is before fedora passed away um and my wife called him and said please come over because he's my best friend yeah at, you know and of 17 years so like best man at my wedding and so she trusted him, called him. He came over, sent her away, and he went through my entire house, make sure everything was good. And then I guess he tucked me into bed and, and like literally tucked me into bed and, and made sure I was good and, and asleep before he called her to come back. <sighs> and like that's the kind of friend he was, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and so at least she had she had that. But that's what I was doing yeah. every day. And I guess I was snapping. I was getting angry. And and. So, and it took me forever because I don't remember any, I don't remember any of this. I have zero recollection of any of this. So it's like, I want to apologize for it, but I, I yes, yeah, it wasn't you. It wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. But then when I started to come to, and I started realizing all these spells that I was having, like I would get angry and snap and walk outside and be there and be like, why the fuck am I here? Yeah. Why am I outside? Yeah. And then I walk back in and I'm like, and like everyone's like shocked. And I'm like, what happened? They're like, what? And I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on. So then it got to the point to where I started knowing what I was doing. Yeah. Then, I, then I could, it's like I could see myself doing it, but not stop it. Yeah. I couldn't stop it. No matter what I wanted to do, I could not stop it. And that's when I started looking into um, things to help me because I'm like, I'm not living like this. And there's not so, much, you, no. like there's not much out no. there. You I'm know? not living like this. I'm not going to do this to anyone around me. You know, that's when the suicide started to come into play with the whole time is like, I can't, I can't live like this. You know, mm. this is, it'd be easier for everyone if I was just gone. It'd be easier for myself if I was just gone. I can't do this to them 
But then, you know, then you start thinking about your family and, and everything else. And you're like, I can't do that to them because yeah. that's not cool. Yeah. You know, and, and that's when, um, you know, I was reaching out to the CBD. I was reaching out to any kind of vitamins. And that's when psilocybin, psilocybin came about. And that was the game changer. Yep. Dude. That was the game changer. That's a crazy ride, man. Yep. Like I've had... Um, I've had a couple of concussions where like I've gotten angry over, yeah, yeah. over the concussion. So like yeah. for anyone that's got a concussion, even a mild version, like, so I, I just hit, I clipped the pedal uh, on my mountain bike and basically like high sided hit a tree, just dead stop in the tree. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I've got myself home, you know, like, so yeah. it was no, not even in the same realm. And when I got home, like my girlfriend at the time, came in and she's like, I had blood all over me. And she's like, oh, I think you should have a shower. And I'm like, I'm not fucking getting in this. Yep, like just yep. lo like losing Lose it. for no reason. You know, yep. and like that was nothing in comparison. You know. <laughs> it was brutal. The yep. levels, uh, like I, just from that experience that I went through, the darkness that you yep. would have been in would have just been like unfathomable. It, For me, honestly, it, but it's made me stronger who I am right now. Oh, you know what I mean? Sure. And, and that's where... You know, you know, we do the we do the the clip bits, you know, the snippets, whatever. Um, on Supercross, like the Millsaps mindset and stuff like that. Like that's something that kind of resonates with me is is everything that we've talked about in this whole podcast. And then, you know, it all started with my incident, my accident, me being suicidal, me being depressed, how I got out of it, and the fact that I just I didn't stop looking yeah, for yeah. how to get out. Yeah. You know, and and it's I can relate that to so many things in my life. And that's kind of where the Millsaps mindset thing was born. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of stuck with me. It's stuck with my wife. You know, we, we've, we've talked about it. We've, we've hashtagged it. It's just, it's just fun. And, and I think it's kind of cool that people can relate to it as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had people hit me up about it. Um, you know, Jerry Malott from the yeah, BMX, yeah. the BMX rider. Yeah. Um, you know, I was helping him try to get over his mental issues and and he's actually just one in south africa wow well, yeah. and it was like fuck yeah dude like hell yeah he messaged me and says i'm back like that feeling that's a sick feeling yeah you know that knowing that you help someone get through something to where he's winning again yeah. you know it's like that's 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 the Millsaps mindset that's what it's about that's you know that's what i'm working on with julian that's what i'm working on with benny that's what i'm working on with cameron and and um even dp and and you know i work with Ryder mcnab now as well so it's yeah. like all those guys i'm trying to get them under that you know to have that mindset that i should have had you know back yeah. in the day yeah. now now i'm here i'm going to implement this most house mindset inside of you you're not going to have a choice but to fucking go yeah, like, yeah. that's it we're going yeah. dude so. man honestly shout out to Brittany too because yeah. like fuck that would have been hard man i don't know like that <laughs> i don't know i wasn't there yeah yeah so i mean i can only i can only fucking imagine you know if she's calling one of my best friends who was the gnarliest dude really that i knew that he could have beat my ass if with 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 a finger realistically he could have he was he was badass for her to have to call him yeah to, <laughs> to come make sure i'm tucked into bed and, and asleep in order to get her to come back home i was pretty fucked up yeah you know and and uh that's that was our life for a while i guess yeah i don't i don't remember it but that was our life man you know i know i know he was there a few times from what they said um i don't remember but that's a beautiful thing yeah. though you know like because uh, fuck yeah. man a lot of people walk away from marriages these days you know a lot of it's like pretty easy to not have to deal with that if you really don't want to. <laughs> like that's it's yeah. pretty fucking cool yeah 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 no i mean it, i wasn't allowed to see my kids for a while and and rightfully so i, I yeah. didn't see him for like i guess i kind of calmed down with the talking to people after a few weeks and i guess i was allowed to i guess she took me back to see my kids i don't remember um but she uh, hands down i had no idea what was going on in the world anyway yeah so yeah. it didn't really make a difference to me what i was doing yeah yeah um all i know is i do remember one little thing on our drive to havasu I remember, don't know why, it's just this one thing is I didn't get car sick. Huh. And I always get car sick, but I didn't get car sick. Huh. And I was pumped. And that's the only snippet that I have of anything was me not getting car sick. Why that weird memory? 
I don't know. I've been trying to think of more. I've been trying to get more recollection in my head of what I did and 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 things that would make sense to me. But I mean, I had surgery on my elbow. I don't remember surgery. Um, I don't remember being in um, in Vail when I had the surgery. I don't remember talking to neurologists. I don't remember talking to anyone. I don't remember. I don't know anything to do with any of my life from what was that October sixth until about February. So it's yeah, it's pretty far gone. It's crazy, yeah. man. Like yeah. it's I'm fucking pumped that you come through it. Yeah, I mean, I a had, lot of people don't. No, I I almost didn't. I mean, I almost didn't. It was it was, and that's why people reach out to me. They're like, dude, you're so open. I'm like. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, yeah. People, people need I'm to sure know. It helps, man. You know, people need to know that it's okay to talk about this stuff. You yeah. know, I was talking to Dave Mira the day or two days before he killed himself. Fuck. You know, like he was talking about me coming out and training with him because we were doing Ironman. I wanted to get into Ironmans and shit. You know, and then then you know he killed himself and. It's- open yeah you, know? you can fix yeah. this like, fix it like let's figure it out be. like reach out to somebody yeah you know and and yeah it, it's definitely one of those things that i have no shame of, of no but i don't opening up I don't about. Think you should dude no like, dude your body is a fucking chemical factory <laughs> yeah that is like you no. are so not in control no of your body and like some people might think that's a cop out and that it's bullshit yeah but you are just chemistry Every yep. fucking thing that is going on in your body is based on electrical signals that are being sent from yep. neuron to neuron. And you have yep. zero control over that. And if you yep. fucking smash that thing, that is going to really yep. mess with all of those signals. And they call your frontal lobe the gateway to your brain. And that's the one I fucked up. Mm. You know, I lost my, my vision with it too. So that was, that's been miserable for me. Um, no, I, I can still see obviously, but I had 20, 20 vision, 15, 20 vision before I hit my head. Now I'm like 70, 20. It's bullshit. And glasses don't help. Um, oh, really? nah. Um, but for me, like you're saying, like you're not in control and, and I, you're not until you figure out how to be. Yeah. But know? I mean, there is, there is like a, yeah. there is like a level of consciousness that you have and you can like. You can be yourself referential. No. Like you can no. look at your own behavior and you can no. like want to change it. But in terms of like the thing that's going on, <laughs> like chemically yeah. at the yeah. bottom of it all, yeah. if you have a huge impact to your brain, like you're not responsible no. after that moment no. in terms of like the way that chemistry is. Because your brain only out. cares about surviving. Yeah. So it reroutes all your neural pathways yeah. just around the part that you damaged to survive it doesn't care what you act like all it cares about doing is surviving mm-hmm. you know and that's why with the psilocybin it fires those you know neural pathways more yeah and tries to get them to re you know to reconnect yeah because i didn't have damage in my frontal lobe it just smashed it you know i had bleeding on the top part of my brain the center part of my brain i had a lot of bleeding up there um there was blood around the entire outer skirts of my brain on uh, the whatever that is called um it was around the entire brain but not on the brain. Yeah, the, okay. The main part of the, I had a lot of bleeding on the center part, which is, I guess, a really hard part to get blood to. Yeah. Um, and that was motor skills. That's why they wouldn't let me back to racing, uh, supposedly. Um, I wouldn't have gone back anyway. There's just no way for me to, I, I can't, I can't do it. Dude. Nah. I, I, not that I'm scared to do it. I just, I literally, I can't do it. I, I've, I've tried to go ride a few times. It just doesn't work. Not anymore. Um, but when I learned how to be in control of my brain, you know, when I learned how to, what to take to help me be in control, that's when my life turned around, like with the psilocybin and stuff like that. I learned how, with that, how I was in control yeah. past the injury. Yeah. Obviously, during the injury, there was no controlling me. Yeah. But past that, I learned how to be in control. And that's, uh, that's what's, that's what saved me. So with the psilocybin, yep. it's what, like a half a gram kind uh, of thing? 100 a milligrams a day. Okay. Yep. 100 milligrams a day. Um, I took it every day for two years straight. Yeah. And like I said, when I didn't take it, I noticed it. Hmm. Um, I don't have to take it anymore. I'm all, I haven't been on it in, in probably a year. Um, and I feel, I feel great without, I don't need it. Yeah. Um, so I took it long enough to get me back to where I'm, I'm, I'm like the baseline. Yeah, I'm good. Wanted. I'm good yeah. where I'm at. You yeah. know, it wasn't getting me any further. Yeah. Yeah. So like, okay, but I'm back enough to where I can, I can 
survive and live life. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Did you ever do any like proper doses of it? No. Fuck, you should. <laughs> you don't want I, I don't I don't want to trip. Yeah. Fair. I don't want to trip. It, it doesn't sound fun to me, you know, and I and I've seen videos on it and stuff like that. It does not sound fun. Okay. Um, but no, I've never done a proper dose of it. Um, I've been told to take, you know, a gram or yeah. a half a gram. But even a gram you wouldn't feel. A gram's a lot. Mm. That's a thousand milligrams. It's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so no i've taken i've taken 200 milligrams at most but that's it yeah i won't take more than that even off even a gram though like you'd still feel pretty much you like i you, don't know you might get a little bit like colors and stuff would be like a little <laughs> bit more like vivid yeah. but to actually like fully trip yeah and like have shit and like that takes a fair bit yeah well I'm not into that. No, you're, you're I don't want to see unicorns and bullshit. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, dude. I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I don't need it anymore. I literally, you know, if someone reaches out to me about, you know, they had a brain injury, like I am glad to help get them on that road. Um, but other than that, I take my everyday vitamins. I'm good on my regimen. My diet is decent. <laughs> Could be better, but it's decent. <laughs> hey, I had in um, out for lunch, so I'm so not So <laughs> I didn't have in and out but <laughs> I didn't need a judge. <laughs> but all in all, no, dude. I mean, I I feel good, so I'm good. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. yeah. I'm just on. I'm on the path of helping all my guys mentally, physically. You know, not so much emotionally. Then. Uh, you know they they need to they got uh, chicks for that they got chicks for that <laughs> um but i'm there for them if they need it yeah um but all in all i'm 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 here to just teach people that i work with or that i don't even work with that you can make it through anything if, yeah if, yeah uh, if you're in control dude it's an awesome yeah. it's an awesome yeah. message and to it's cool to like just do it really by the book too you yep. know and just to like you fit you found things that work for you yep. you stuck to it you didn't go too hard no. you didn't go not enough you just did what you yep. needed to do yep and got the result but and, and and they're like you know people that i got it from they're like you're gonna it's gonna take time because i got it from maps um What's which maps? is the company in in california that is a, like a uh psychedelic ah uh, yeah yep, yep, yep. it's it's a, like it's therapeutic through it, the, yeah yep, yep. and um they're like, it's going to take a while for you to feel if you stay at this dose. And I'm like, I don't want to feel it, so I'll stay at this dose. I don't want to be weirded out during the day. I don't want to be a weird dude more than I am. <laughs> and so I just did the 100 milligrams every day for about two years. And and I gave it to my wife every day, too. And it, it helped with her, you know, her stress and stuff. Um, she probably needs to get back on it. Dude, um, it's fucking magic, so man. Like, she, there's a reason they call it magic mushrooms. Like, it honestly yep. is magic. Yeah, she needs to get back on it right now, especially with the house shit, full stress case. So, yeah, Brittany, uh, Brittany, I have some at home for you. Well, it's funny, me and my wife, we've um, we've fucking had some in the cupboard, like, because you get the chocolates nowadays. Oh, you can get the chocolate, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I did, yeah, I don't like those. Oh, really? I don't like chocolate. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Everything you've said, that's the craziest yep, thing you've said. Yep, this I don't like chocolate. That's bizarre. I know. I fucking love chocolate. But I'm glad because I'd be really fat if I did. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I thought maybe you did. <laughs> but we've. This is over. <laughs> we've, uh, yeah, we've had some in the in the cupboard there to like kind of do. It's like a couple things yep. to like do together, you know what I mean? But like we just haven't had the free run at it and like the weather's been shit and i'm like i don't want to do it when the weather you gotta you gotta have the right approach dude the only bad the right trip i've ever had was a full-on lightning storm <laughs> and i don't know why like i'm never i'm never like the bad trip guy like i feel like it's yep. just all in your head but yeah fucking rainstorm full <laughs> so, lightning so now i'm just like nah, i'm just gonna wait until you had a bad setting yeah no, that's yeah. what it was you had a bad setting set and setting yeah but yep, dude, on that it's crazy to do <sighs> It's crazy to do like with people that you love. Like I feel like yep. to do more than like a one, like a half gram or a point two or what. Like <laughs> yep. if you do like two grams is like a low recreation, what they'd call like a recreational dose. Two grams? Yeah, yeah. That's heavy. No, dude. I'm That's telling you. I would literally be, I don't even know where I'd be with two grams. But man, just get in like a, a, a nice room with warm <laughs> colors with nice music you would music. need to put a straight jacket on me for two grand no blankets and you just like with the person that you love like i don't know there's like some no. the empathy that you feel and like the kindness and the care like i don't know there's something there's i mean it's it's like amazing in in like that that's a setting. lot of grams 
dude there's I know it's all pe- for the gram right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah dude i know people that do like five six grams no yeah it's like full on no dude i feel like i'd die yeah i i literally even even when i did 200 i had to go sit outside by myself really uh-huh. i'm like nope i'm going outside leave me alone did you like any, but you didn't see like the nope. visuals and stuff. Nope. Didn't you? I was just was like, just feel it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't feel, I don't feel right. Yeah. The hundred grams. I never once noticed. Yeah. When I went to 200 grams, milligrams, sorry. I like, nope, I'm going outside. Leave me alone. And I sat out there for a couple hours and I'm like, you know what? Okay. I'm okay now. Yeah. And I never once ever touched 200 milligrams again. Never <laughs> once. That's so funny. I'm like, I, 100, 100 milligrams every day I was good to go so I, I was like I'm not changing this I'm it, not dabbing. it's crazy when you have more the so my bucks party that's like pretty much we all just had like a, bu- yeah. a bunch and man on my, <laughs> I had my Garmin I, I need to like go back into the yeah. data but on my Garmin you can see my stress is literally a perfect wave it's insane dude and like that feeling of like oh, I need to go be by myself it's like that and then it's like, I need to be with my friends. And then it's like, I need to be by myself. I need to be with my friends. I need to be by myself. And you just ride in this wave, dude. So like, I don't want that wave. I'm good on, I'm good on just. No, nah, no, nah, I get it. No, nope. no way for me, man. I don't like to surf. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like that, that feeling is like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like you kind of can get that fucking like, oh, no, nah, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's so most people that I've, I've ever helped, you know, or people reach out to me for their head injuries. Like I've led them down that road. Yeah. But mainly for me, like anyone that I deal with is trying to get them to overcome their fear, you know, trying to get to them in control of their brain. Mm. Um, because now that I'm able to do that on my own, after all my shit that I went through, when you can get in control of it, dude, it's the uh, sky's the limit. Yeah. You know, and that's where I don't like to be out of control. So like me taking a, yeah, <laughs> a full yeah. gram or two grams, I wouldn't be in control. And I, 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 uh, I don't yeah, know. That's the thing. So yeah. it, it's for me, if, if I can get them in control and I can get myself in control, then we're on to the races. Yeah. So. What, how do you, like, do you have any effect, like residual effects these days? Like, yeah, you- I still have a speech impediment. Okay. Um, and I have bad vision. Yeah. Um, I also have something like when I write, um, my brain, my hand, my brain wants it to write, but my hand won't. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Weird, weird, weird. And it drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, what's, what else? Uh, that's about and and I I get uh vertigo pretty easily now. Yeah. Okay. And I never did before. Yeah. So besides all that, I'm pretty good beyond that. And then like just mentally, like the moods and depression and stuff, like just fully balanced out. Gone. Yeah. Fuck, that's cool. Yeah. All all good there so far. Yeah. I mean, you can you can ask Brittany, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apart from just like the normal. Yeah. Part. Besides the normal, like yeah, no, yeah. It, it's. I feel like I'm pretty normal now, yeah. you know, and, and it's a good feeling, but yeah. yeah, hands down my vision sucks. I wish I had that back, but everything else I can deal with. Yeah. So all good, man. Yeah. We're good. We're good. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about 2013 cause that was a good year. Yeah. I remember being in the stands at A1. Yeah. Fucking sickest race. I remember being <laughs> really cold. It was freezing that night from what I remember. Yeah. But the race was insane. Race was sick. You and Canard. Yeah. I thought, dude, we, me and uh, and Alex that uh, works for me. He, uh, we we watched the re rewatch yeah. the race last night, dude. Four three laps to go. Looks like Canard's fucking out of there. And then just you come back. I mean, I needed a breather. Yeah, fair. You know, I needed a breather. I was taking terrible lines. Um, I had really bad lines in certain areas, and when he got in front of me. I saw him hitting the same, you know, not in the same, but like different, but still bad lines. So I was searching around, which gave him a little bit of a, a cushion because I was searching. Because ah, you were trying some different I was shit. searching. Yeah. And then he made one little mistake and I caught up real fast. Uh, and then when I caught up to him, I had already found the good lines and that's when I passed him. Um, but yeah. So you passed him on a, there was a double and then a whoop section. Yep. I passed the good line that I found was Dude, on that double. The way that you yeah. landed so tight on the inside yeah. of him on that double and then the drive that you got through the whoops yeah. that was that was <laughs> like finesse of the highest level i i wanted it you know i knew when i landed that double good because we kept casing it 
Yeah. And I finally found the good line where I could make it. And you were so tight compared to yeah. him. And I knew when I found it, I knew I could land it close to him. He wasn't going to beat me in the whoops. So it was everything I had and, and scrubbing the strip a little bit. But then I didn't want to run him out so wide to take him out. But I knew if I just slowly went into his line, we were going to hit. And me being the bigger guy, <laughs> yeah. he was going to get the shit into the stick when it came to having to slow down. And it worked, you know, had it not. And had I had to keep running it, I would have kept going, Yeah, you know, but I didn't, I didn't have to, when I hit him, I felt him go, hop, hop. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and I was able to go the double quad still. And I had a big enough gap to where I was okay. Um, but no, that was, that was an awesome, awesome, awesome night. And Trey's still a good friend of mine. So, yeah. you know, it's, it was cool to, to, to be one and two on that one. Well, I think the cool thing about that is that he'd missed so much time yeah. with injury and it was horrific. I was actually there the night he and Mo had that crash. So was I. Fuck, that was bad. I was bro. behind him. Really? Huh? Dude, I thought he was dead. Yeah, I was behind him. Fuck. Yeah. That would have been so scary to see. That's like worst case scenario. You, I, I didn't want to race the rest of the night. I don't blame you, dude. We No yeah. one knew what was yeah. wrong with him. Yeah, no one. Even Kate up on the line's like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. You know, but we had to. And you know, I was doing shit that year anyway. But I mean, I didn't want to race because I was out of shape. And and before I even lined up and got to see that, now you add that on top of me not wanting to race because I'm out of shape. It's like, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but no, it, you know, yeah, he, he had a really bad back injury. Yeah. You know, broke his back really bad. Yeah. You know, and, and that, I, I don't think, I think if he would have broke his back a different way, I don't think it would have ever been to the extent of, of him getting landed on like that. Yeah. You know, him getting landed on and on TV scene, that's what made that injury so bad. I, uh, I I th yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I agree. Yeah, Cause um, it's like, it's like worst case scenario. Yeah. He would have felt so like vulnerable and yeah. exposed and like, I'm about to die. Yeah. You know, that, that fucks with the person. Yeah. And, 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 you know, there's go back to the injury list. You know, there's people who have way more injuries than him, you know, but they're not, everyone looks at Trey as injury prone and oh my God, his accident. Well, th he broke his back. Yeah. And that was fucking terrible, but he was riding, you know, what, six months later. So I love Trey and, and he had, that was fucking dirty hands down, you know, and, and it's just one of those things where <clears throat> I feel like people overlook a lot of the, everyone else's injuries yeah you know that that were in the front with him yeah you know um but trey hands down him and i after his accident after him being off um he got hurt in 11 right was that 11 or 12 i don't know maybe it, it was one of those one of those years yeah yeah um it might have been 11 yeah then come back in in, in 13 and, and be there yeah that's cool yeah that's yeah, and I think that's what made that night. Yeah. So, it, dude, crazy night. Villapoto yeah. crashed like 50 times. Like just the yeah. shittest night he's yeah. probably ever had in his life. Yeah. And while that's going on, two absolute fan favorites yeah. are just going at it. Like yeah. that was such a sick night. <laughs> it was a good night. It was a good year. You know, until my I blew my knee out again halfway through the season. But all in all, I did what I could. Yeah. Um, and... I loved the fact that I was able to show myself for at least a year. Um, yeah, thirteen is cool because like the whole Bobby Hewitt thing. I just don't think people understand how cool that guy is. <laughs> like he's such well, a he's such a good dude. I mean, I I grew up you know racing and and, and he was always there. Yeah, you know, so with Hunter and 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 whatnot. So I've known him obviously for so many years, and then I talked to him at the banquet uh 2012 when i got second in points and i was like hey i heard you're gonna have a 450 team next year and he goes yeah i'm going to i'm like sign me up you know he would have been like what and he's like he's like yeah but can you do what you did this year i'm like yeah and he goes i don't think so but we'll see <laughs> and i'm like okay motherfucker <laughs> um and i'm like ah oh, he's not gonna do it you know i get it i understand um and then I I was testing. But why do you think that? Like, you got second in points a year before. Just because, just because it was just everyone thought it was a fluke, mm. you know. And and 
Because you were on JGR. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And JGR just was gave me an offer, you know, a couple of weeks later. And at the same time, I had a RCH offer. And I was waiting on Bobby's. I'm just waiting on the phone call. And I'm sitting there testing outdoors. And I get the phone call from, from a strange number. And it was Dave Gallon. And he's like, hey, what will it take? And I gave him a number. And he came back lower. And I said, I can't. Like, I, I need this number. He called me back and said, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, done. All the other contracts went away. Suzuki called me and says, hey, you're not signing with the factory team. You know, you got to sign with RCH if you want factory help. I'm like, I'm good. Like, I, I've been down the factory road. Like, I'm good. Um, I want to be here. I, I know Scuba. I've known Scuba for 15 years. Like, I'm, I've known Bobby for, you know, forever. And I know they're going to do what it takes for uh, to give me what I want. We're not gonna get anything from us. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that just crazy? And and same, you know, JGR, I said goodbye to Koi. You know, obviously it sucked, but I mean, it's I had to go. And same with RCH, obviously. So when I signed, my first day was horrible with them. It was I was I was horrible on the bike. We were in altitude, bike wasn't, you know, what I wanted. I was I was I was scared. I was like, what the fuck? Really? Did I just do. And Where'd you just test? Uh, Were you up in like the high desert or something? No, past Cahia at the ranch, whatever it was back oh, in the day. Oh, dude, I yeah. fucking hated that yeah. place. So I was there on Supercross track and it yeah. was miserable. Dude, the worst. And I went to Milestone the next day and the normal sea level I was riding. I'm like, okay, fuck. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, this bike is so good. So it went from an instant, oh shit, to. Yes, just a single day, you know, and and from that day on, it was just you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, but yeah, Bobby Hewitt, because you know, maybe I brought it up to him at the banquet is uh, is maybe a reason why why he signed me. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, he's one of my favorite people in the industry. <laughs> I love Bobby. Yeah, you know, I love Scuba. He's so underrated. So like people just don't. I don't think people know how cool he is. No, I don't think people know like he's like a. He's like just a really old school good dude, good hard guy. It's like Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. We haven't even talked about Carlos. Yeah, man. Carlos is my whole life. Yeah, yeah. And no, and it's crazy that not many people know that. Yeah, you dude. Know? I remember that. that. That he came into the pros with me. Yeah, you know. What well, you was your mechanic since he was on eighties. I was yeah. I was fuck, dude. I was like ten or eleven. Yeah. How did that come about? My mom and dad got divorced and or were going before they got divorced, I guess something like my mechanic was whatever. So they were getting help from Carlos or my mom was whatever. And then they got divorced and then I needed Carlos full time. Yeah. Um, And he was Brian Gray's mechanic. Yeah. Uh, that's another one I forgot about. Um, That was in our era that just passed away a couple of years ago. Um, He uh was with Brian Gray and came over to me full time. And was with me for 14 years, man. 14 years, he's my mechanic. So um, I still see him almost every day at the test yeah, track. Yeah, the test track. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, every weekend at the race, he's there, obviously with KTM. Yeah. So it's nice having someone like that who has been a father figure, a father figure to myself. For sure. For so many years. Yeah. Attached to Julian. Yeah. Because you know he's going to get, you know, he's going to get love. Yeah. That's that's a big reason why I was stoked that Julian got a KTM ride. Yeah. Okay. So, not not. I mean, everyone else at KTM is fantastic. They're they're great. His mechanic Austin is amazing. Pedro there is great. You know, um, Carlos, Frankie is amazing. Um, Ian and Roger. It, it's it's all a, it's the motor guys are awesome, and so are the suspension guys. It's just it's all a good group now. But for me, mainly, obviously, it's Carlos. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that. when did you guys stop working together? Uh, 2011. So what was, what year, what team? When I went to JGR. And he stayed at Honda. And he went to KTM. Okay. Oh, so he went to KTM that year. Well, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't take him with me. Ah. Koi said, no, you're not breaking your mechanic. Fuck. And I'm like, y'all are making a mistake. Like he could turn this bike around. Like y'all are making him a big mistake. And they're like, you're not bringing your mechanic. Was it a big money deal to go to J- JGR? What do you mean? Like, was it like it was a big sign on to go there? No. Okay. I took a 
fucking huge pay cut going oh there. really yeah, huge pay cut no shit huge huge but i was willing to take a huge pay cut and get off honda yeah right so um but yeah it was a huge pay, pay cut to go to to jgr no shit um, but you kind of like just had faith in that program i needed a change i wanted yeah. excitement you yeah. know and the first year i went there i was like what the fuck did i do yeah it was horrible and then you know i was gigantic the trainer that they had was i love to do the you know he's awesome but just just didn't know moto didn't know what you needed just didn't didn't mesh with me with my body and and i was so out of shape um and not like i was strong as an ox yeah but just the wrong strength yeah and then you could lift the bike yeah, <laughs> yeah i could lift it and throw it as far as i wanted <laughs> yeah um and then the next year they hired james and that's when we were able to hire our own guys and do our own thing yeah um what was cool about the trainer there though is during you know halfway through supercross or three quarters of the way through supercross i realized like I, I can't keep doing this and i went and hired my my old old trainer and i'm like hey please help me please help me and i went and stayed with him for a week when i had a week off and i came back and i said this is what i'm doing this is what i just did this is what i'm doing you're either going to be along with it or basically you're going to get me fired which one's it going to be and he's like let's do it and he was along for the ride at that point he loved it you know, he was mm. cool with it and that was an amazing thing about him and when they hired james it freed up everything but at that time i was already gone for two months because i was still in limbo waiting for them to hire james yeah so i was living with my trainer getting my ass in shape and I lost 40, 45 pounds in a month and a half. That's a lot of weight. Two, a month and a half, I lost 45 pounds. And I would do three, four bike rides a day. The gym, it was the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst. It was miserable. And it, but I, at the end of the two months, I loved it. Yeah. You know, it was like pushing through it. <clears throat> but yeah, no, and then. I was able to move out to North Carolina, move back to California, be with, you know, be around my friends and my and the tracks that I like to go to. Yeah. But I was not allowed to have James's bike. Mm. James had a good bike. I wasn't allowed to have it. Okay. So then, I, then James wasn't doing very good. I was beating him. I was, you know, what was I? Podium, you know, in the top three in points, whatever it was. And then James left. And then I got James' bike. Mm. And then I started podium a lot. Was it way better? Way better. Really? Way, way, Why way the better. Fuck? Like if you can Don't build know. one, just build two. Nope. Too expensive to build two. That's so retarded. I got I got the That's absolutely I got the shit in the stick of that yeah. one. When I got James's bike, oh my god, I was the bike was great. I was like, you know what? Like I'm good staying here. Like this bike is fucking awesome. But I didn't like the fact that they did that to me. Mm. You know what I mean? The fact that they treated him way better than me. And I knew that he was better, obviously, or better results, uh, better career. But it's like, I'm still on the team. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't So, So since you're, you know, when I was able to ride his bike and see the difference, I'm like, nah, fuck this. Like, that was wrong. Like, I'm going to find somewhere else to go. Yeah. Um, and they offered me a one-year contract. And I'm like, nah, I don't want a one-year deal. Yeah. So uh, Bobby offered me a two-year deal. Yeah. So I took it. And I wanted to be somewhere where, where I felt welcomed. Oh, it makes all yeah. the difference in the world. Yeah. I felt wanted at Bobby with Bobby, Dave, and, and Scuba. So that's where I went. Yeah. Man, that is crazy about yep. Carlos that they, you could, I always wondered why that he didn't go with you. Yeah. I was, it was, it was a shit decision on, I think, my part as well for even allowing it to happen. Um, but, at that point, I didn't have much leverage. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. But, man, it's funny, like, even when I did the podcast with Coop, yeah. he was saying, like, bro, you have no idea how good Carlos is. He still has no idea how good Carlos is. Yeah, and he, and he'll admit that he's the fucking man. Yeah, I mean, he was with Carlos for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, when, when Coop broke his femur in my front yard, Carlos was my mechanic, and he was on an 80. You know what I mean? Like, Carlos has been around <laughs> with me forever. Yeah. Um. You know, and and it, it, it's it's one of those things where it's cool to see someone come from you know Puerto Rico and move here with nothing, 
work at a shop and do jet skis and boats and mopeds and dirt bikes, work on every little thing to become what he is now. You know, it's, he, Gives me goosebumps, he man. technically, you know, lived the American dream. Yeah. 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 You know, he yeah. did. That's yeah. what he wanted to do. He set his mind to, and he did it. That's awesome. So, I mean, just like Julian, Julian right now is the true American dream. Yeah. You know, nobody to something because he put work in. Yeah. It's, all you gotta do is put fucking work in. Yeah. It's crazy. Both yeah. of those fucking guys, you know, you can look up to for what they did to become, you know, where yeah. they're at right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw Carlos at the test track the other day and nope. just like, he's just, he's old. He's just, <laughs> <laughs> but man, he's just a stoic, solid. Yep. Just he's, you think about what he's done, you know, like yep. to, from you, like you are one of the, biggest amateur riders of all time yeah you know like you pave the way for like the modern careers of so many guys you know like in terms of writing out like a blueprint of like factory kid crushing it going into the 250 class winning championship and like you had this guy with you the whole time and then yep. the career that he's done yep. afterwards like it's pretty <laughs> incredible what you know what he's been able to achieve yeah no there. he's he's as far as mechanic I love every mechanic that I ever worked with. I love, I, I love all you guys, and even Scuba knows I love him too, you know, because Scuba I would I would put up against anyone as well. Um, but Carlos, hands down, is is probably one of the best all around mechanics that's ever walked this industry. Mm. Um, but because there's so much more than working on the bike, it, right? he, like, he does everything. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Ev there's a bunch of guys that can yeah. work on the bike. And amazing. think about Scuba, dude. Think about Scuba. He literally. From New York, rode a dirt bike, and we decided to become a mechanic, moved to MTF, or before MTF was even a thing, moved to our house, worked on our bikes for a little bit. MTF was born. So you go that far back Yeah, that far too. back with, with Scuba. And he became an, an MTF mechanic. He was my practice guy for a minute, working on my bike stuff, but never really a practice guy, but just was working on my stuff because I didn't know how to. And look where he's at. You know, it's like then you take Carlos. It's it, they're they almost have the same yeah. the same path, yeah. And they're both running teams now, and they're both badass, and and they're both family to me. So it's it's to me it was cool that I got to work with both of them. And yeah. my dream, honestly, was my last year that I was going to race my last race. I wanted both of them to be there on the starting line with me. That, that was that would be my dream. Um, that was what I had planned. Carlos is going to do. You know, whether it be the heat race and the main or, or vice versa, like my, that was my, that was my goal. And would have ever happened? Probably not, but it was a dream because yeah. <laughs> it would have been cool. Like to the people that I came in with to exit with. Yeah. You know? Well, and because your dad really wasn't on the scene no, racing wise. After, once. after, no, my dad left, I think when I was 10. Yeah. They, 10, 11, they went separate ways. I want to say it was around that time. Yeah. Um, 11 i think yeah but so, then like carlos really would have been like the main man in carlos your life, was there. right yeah, yeah. so yeah. that goes way fucking deeper than wrenching on a dirt bike yep yep he sent me a photo of of me at his house in jacksonville on my 14th birthday him handing me a cake on my 14th birthday at his house in jacksonville yeah it was i mean we go way back it speaks to two people's character i think as well yeah when you can be in a like a relationship for that long yep. like it's a relationship whether it's it's like personal and it's professional but yep. like obviously speaks to your character and yep. obviously speaks to his too no and and, I, and like i said i love it there and, and with him looking at me like you know as a son figure knowing that i work with julian you know he wants to give julian you know the best stuff which is why i'm i'm pumped that he's there yeah. so again i've already I've, re I've repeated myself on that one but it yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's yeah. a very, very, very big deal. Yeah. So I'm pumped with it. Dude, this has been a fucking great podcast, man. It's been uh it's been really cool. All all over the map. No, nah, I love it. That's why all we over go the map. That's why we go so long, man. Yeah. Just get get to yeah. fucking We got into fucking psychedelics, we got into medicine, we got into injuries, yeah. <laughs> we racing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, good. We love it. No, nah, it's been cool, yep. man. It's uh like I said, just uh you're a figure of, like since I could remember, Thank you, you know, like just being 
biggest fucking gangster as a <laughs> as a kid, providing a lot of a lot of inspiration. So actually, thank get, you. So before we get out of here, is there any anything to plug? Anything you, that you've got going on outside of uh, training training the boys? There is, man. There's uh, everyone keeps asking me when I'm you know my tracks are going to get done, and because we launched a video about a, a year ago, um, announcing the Canyon Bound David Mills House in Mex Park, and we finally got all the permits done. We should be breaking ground here in the next few weeks. Oh, sick. Um, and I think it's going to be huge. You know, we have so many man caves being built there that you can pull your RVs under, full oh. man caves, whatever you want. Um, we'll have an, a restaurant and bar. We'll have a convenience store. We're going to have my place that, you, you know, if you want to come and, and have camps with me, I have a 50 track, a vet track, a main track. Um, and it's right off Highway 40. It's close to Havasu, close to Kingman, only an hour and a half from Vegas. So I truly believe that we can make this something badass. Um, but yeah, no, we should be breaking ground for here pretty damn soon. So I'm super excited about that. So what, like you've been working on this for a long time? About two years now. It yeah. took it took almost two almost two years to get all the permits for it. Yeah. Um, and it was a mission in a very small town for some reason. I don't know, but it took about two years to get all the permits. About a year and a half, sorry. And we got them, and um, they're out there right now digging the re uh, retention pond. So we have enough water to do all the grading for all the man caves and then all the grading for all the tracks, all the water for the tracks. Yeah. So, yeah, it's getting, it's already there. They already broke ground on that part. Now we got to break ground on the track. Yeah. So I, it's crazy to me that there's not more places that have like restaurant, yep. bar, convenient. Like, why? Why is that not a thing? Like, even. <sighs> It's funny because my wife's not into bikes at all. Yeah. She never, didn't even know what one was before we met. Yeah. And then I take her to the track and she's like, this fucking sucks. Like, what What are we, like, this is the shittest place. Yeah. You have to bring everything yourself. Yep. You're always in the dirt. <clears throat> There's nowhere to go. The toilet's normally, like, why, if you've got all this dirt and you've got all these people coming here, why can't there like be some nice things to do while you're here? We'll have a driving range. We'll have, oh. um um what are those what are those super ball things that they're ah, it's like, like tennis a, tennis ball but it's not tennis. pickle pick, pick, pick ball yeah yep, yep. um swimming pool nice uh, so and like i said restaurant and bar so you can just you can literally <laughs> watch your kid ride your 50 or the 50 and you can sit there and have a burger and a drink and and just have a good day you know and, and you can go ride side by side straight from there up into the mountains you can ride uh dual sports straight from there up into the mountains you can actually ride from there to Havasu through the mountains, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's actually not bad dirt, too. I went out there and walked after it rained. It was pretty sick. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be sick. It's going to be one of the biggest things to come to Arizona for dirt bike tracks, um, I think, and on the West Coast uh, is my goal. So the the scene's pretty good in Arizona, though. Well, right? yeah. Well, like, we, there's a lot of riders. There's a lot of riders. So we lost Canyon. You know, we had Western, but it's, it's, it's like a private rental now. Um, and you have ACP and you have Motoland, but again, people go from Vegas to California and that's twice as far as just coming to me, Yeah, you know, and, and, and I plan on doing camps there. I plan on doing weekly camps or, you know, weekend camps, having races, open practice days all the time. Um, I want to have, you know, kind of like a cool, maybe tri-state type thing where we yeah. get three tracks together and, and just make a little series out of it. Um, I want to do a lot of cool stuff with it, like Moto for Kids or Mini Majors and Swap Moto. Whatever I can get there, I'm going to get there. I'm going to make sure I can get and do whatever it takes to make sure I get it all there. Yeah, that's sick. So I'm looking forward to it. Have you guys got like an Instagram or a website or anything? Uh, website, yes. I um, I think they launched it, but I think we are waiting for everything to get yeah, yeah. finalized. Yeah. But I know it's Canyon Bound. Davey Millsaps in Mex Park is, is the name of the facility. Um, a Canyon Bound, I think, is is the website just Canyon Bound. Yeah. Um, and from there, we'll just kind of hopefully grow. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Oh, that's sick. Well, yeah. uh, thanks again for doing yeah. this. And uh, yeah, it's been really, it's honestly been really, really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. See you, brother. See ya. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.